Hello, this is 375, and hello, Nui. I'm glad you enjoy watching 375, adding database to ECS, because I enjoy streaming, watching, and commenting on 375 dash dash adding database to ECS. I also have stream transcoding quality options today, which is all I could ever hope for in a, the start of a day. Welcome, friends. I'm going to be doing more of the tedious process of moving my game's data to a database. So, I have only maybe 30 different kinds of components that need to be stored in the database. And we're just doing the first one. But I'm, my, my hope is that after getting the first few done, it gets faster and faster. And maybe I can um, make some helpers to speed up the process. Hey there, Endorn. Or would you enjoy 375 migrating JSON to real database instead? I don't know. Hey there, cat peasant. Nui beat you? Yes, Nui's like pretty much always exactly on time. Nui's here before I am. <laughs> let, me, let me even wave to Nui because I forgot to do that. All right. Okay. I have to get this stuff done. I'm not looking forward to it, but let me get my uh, windows all arranged. Uh, I want game snapshot because people are going to ask about what, what it looks like. So I want to close that new file, make it JSON and collapse it. And then open it at this point. Here are all the different tables we're going to need. And today I'm working on character, right? So this being one, all the columns of one row, where the primary key is the entity. I am basically going to be moving this from JSON, as you see here. It's one huge JSON file that's over 10,000 lines long into a database, at least partially. So all of the data in the entity component system split by component type is going to go into the database split by table. Am I thirsty? Not really. Hey there, C17R. The second sombrero. Oh, wait. I see what you're saying, Endurn. I didn't actually see that. That's hard for me to see. What is that? What's that, what's that cactus holding in his hand? I can't tell. It's some kind of drink. <laughs> you heard a Discord notification, or at least some notification. Yeah. You got me a drink? Oh, thank you very much. It's too bad I can't actually enjoy it. I can only look at its tiny little graphic. Twitch calls it bubble tea. Oh, I know what that is. I tried it once. I didn't particularly like it, but, you know, it wasn't bad. Just, I'm like, okay. Is this what it, it bubble tea is like? Okay, fine. <laughs> why why the bubble tea emote modification? Is that like a seasonal thing? Hey there, good damn. How am I doing? Okay. Thanks for asking. Hope you're doing well too. That's right. Adam Bottle is better. All right, let me get to work. I was, I'm working on a, this table by table. I'm beginning with the character table, right? So that was in executor. And I'm looking for character, right? Actually, there should be a character characters test. Here we go. Right. Oh, it wasn't in the entity component system. It was directly in the... I mean, it wasn't in the executor. It was in the entity component system directly. Right. This is where I left off where I got destroy entity done, but not create or destroy component or set component. Just swarmed at work or would rather be doing other things? You mean like learning C++? Hey there, Opie Opie. I am today. You must be tomorrow. <laughs> All right. You know, one thing that annoys me about Visual Studio Code is pop-ups like that, which have absolutely no purpose to me. 
that expands to a bunch of gobbledygook. I wish I could tell VS Code that, hey, I don't really care about what assert true expands to. <laughs> All right, anyway. Let me find the code that matches this. This would be in um, components. This one. Destroy entity. Here, this bunch of code. I need to make this smaller because we're gonna we're gonna be doing this for every single kind of table, right? In fact, um, we're gonna be doing this in a loop because we need to delete from every table when we destroy an entity, right? In fact, I wonder if I can make that a um, compound statement. Actually, I don't know how to do that. I wonder how slow that'll be that we're that we're having to loop and delete from every single table because we're going to have a lot of tables here, right? We have like twenty some tables. Well, I guess we'll know when we measure it. This one, I can make a helper for. Because these are going to all be common. Resetting, binding to the entity, stepping, and then printing an error if it doesn't work. Where to put that, though? I suppose I can put it up here in this anonymous namespace. Okay, so let me put a bookmark here. Clear my old bookmarks. Oh, they are all cleared. Nice. Okay, let's grab this. I suppose I'll just put it right here. Or I'm going to call it void. Actually, what am I doing putting it here? It should just be in the ECS. It shouldn't, it's not anonymous. So let me declare it here. A lot of things in the ECS. Can I, let's collapse this. Methods. I feel like putting it uh, at the top here, actually. Uh, execute entity statement. Ah, oh, what else? What else am I going to be doing with the database? Uh, let, let me name it after what I'm doing here. Execute the delete statement. All right, and then I'm going to go to here and put it here. I can only have one thing on my clipboard at a time. There. All right. Let's do the database dance. I don't know what the database dance is. Uh, prepared statement. I forgot what I named the thing. Okay, I could put... A bookmark there, and I can jump around bookmarks here. Shepard database abstractions prepared statement. Can I get a short reference to that? Ooh, nice. This is what I want. 
I want const to that. Uh, let's call it statement. First requirement that DB dance is to drink a pint of wine. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Okay, it looks like I need to give it the entity number. Okay, and then these are my formal, or my, um, yeah, my formal arguments, right? Declaration, here we go. All right. Now I can just do this. Delete entity statement entity. Gets rid of one line. Now I need to put this whole thing into a loop, right? This thing can also be a helper. Let's pull that in too. Let's make that construct delete statement. Yeah, in fact, it's going to actually have the same parameter here. The second one, though, is go it's the uh, the column num the column type. So standard string. Uh, type, component type. And back to here, paste. My cat's complaining that he's not getting let into the room that he wants to, to sleep in. The door is closed. I'm considering taking a 30 second break to go let the door open because the cat's really annoying when he's constantly meowing. Maybe I'll show him on, on stream first as a penalty. So we do that. Hold on. Let me, uh, I will just hide the camera. I won't say I'm BRB. I'm just going to hide the camera and I'll be right back to, um, grab the cat. I would like to introduce the being who is interrupting my stream with constant meows. Say hello. It's the beast! He's gonna rip your face off! Ah! I left the door open, so now he can run off and sulk and then go into his room. Meow! Ask the permission of the, fe of the beast first whether they're okay with me showing them to the public. Nah, he's okay. Hey, <laughs> mud mudribbit. And hey there, Imperi. It looks like I never said hello today. All right, construct database statement. Here is the code that was in my clipboard all along. <laughs> Let me turn this into an early exit. If the database is null, or the statement is not null, either way, we're not gonna do a construction, so we're just gonna return. Then, otherwise, we're going to build something. And here I can make. Oh, that was there all along. Interesting. That I didn't notice. I did that wrong last time. Well, now it's fixed. Okay, and then this is delete statement, right? There we go. Hey there, Atomic Nibble. Okay, what doesn't it like about this one? Probably because that's const. It can't be const. We're going to overwrite it. Looks good. So now I can button this thing back up. I can say construct database statement, delete entity statement, 
comma components of type first and then execute so now it's down to two lines and I can put that into a loop by well it's actually already in a loop isn't it it's already in a loop so I don't need to worry about it this will handle delete for everything then cool it's like one of your cats he's the loudest yeah mine's like 17 years old and he's a Himalayan cat he is a old crotchety kitty yeah he has to get his way he's very persistent okay so I am done with destroy entity this is all we need to do for the database stuff it's for every component type we're going to construct a delete statement if we haven't already done so and execute it on that entity easy peasy right so next would be um let's do this destroy component of type because that's just as easy right in fact it's the same it's the same scenario except for we have a destroy component of type character 523 all right so it fails not surprisingly because I haven't written the code yet but I think all I need to do is copy these down to um, where we do destroy component of type I think we would put it right here, right? Okay. I don't have a variable of type delete entity statement. Let's get one of those. Here's that line. I forgot to copy that one. There we go. Components of type entry second delete entity, right? Uh, why is it saying it doesn't have a del oh it's a JSON value oh is it it's store entry right yes okay so um, type instead of components of type first is there and then we need impl in front of all this stuff right because this happens to be on the outer interface not the not the impl and we're done Thank you for that follow, and hey there, A Squared and Toulouse, how are you two doing today? Toulouse, I need to confess some, oh, wait a second. Three subscribe for 11 months? Almost a year? Well, thank you for the resub. Toulouse, I need to confess something to your, your uh, evil twin. Um, I um, kind of got to where I didn't, I didn't really like the uh, MC Eternal as much as Project Ozone 3. So I'm, I think I'm going to have to be going back to that one. I uh, kind of felt like it was too hard. Uh, the combat in that, in, that, in that mod pack is too hard for me. <laughs> I kept dying on everything. So, <laughs> And it was, it's harder to get machines going. So I think I'm going to be returning to Project Ozone 3. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Definitely okay. Yeah, I, maybe it's just I'm just not ready. I haven't, I haven't prepared... Uh, as a Minecraft warrior to uh, play that mod pack. It seems harder. <laughs> Don't have to apologize. Okay. Yeah, but you, you have the, you set up the, the sub server and all that. So I, um, I was trying to specialize in farming, but I got to where like, I did all the easy things in the farming quest. And then the more difficult ones were like build machines. I'm like, oh, okay. To build machines, I got to get a whole bunch of materials I don't have. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, anyway, this should pass two out of four my tests. Yay, look at that. All right, so create, which one's going to be more difficult, create or set? Create's going to be an insert and a set's going to be an update, right? And your attack stuff is the hard stuff. Yeah, it was just that there are so many uh, monsters in that mod pack that would uh, kill me in one shot. And there were some that I couldn't even hit, and I don't know why. It was a, a little frustrating. <laughs> anyway. 
I'm sure like if I get more familiar with some of those mods, I can go back and play this one again and and know it, and know a little bit more of what I'm doing. I think I like Project Project Ozone three more because I had the uh, I had more tools, so I could um, I I wouldn't get s stuck as easily. There were all, there were like three or four different ways of doing any one thing. Okay, create and create component of type. I suppose we can at least arrange it. Actually, that means that this arrange becomes the act, right? And we would expect... What was expect database rows again? Oh, I see. It counts the number of rows, so we should expect one row, right? Actually, we should be doing more. This is where the um, fields become important. So I'm going to have to um, put a real character in here, JSON object. And I'm going to need to fill it with what really is in my data. Uh, do I have a test for that already? I do not. Uh, but here I had the shape of it, right? I th I seem to remember making a test that had these things in it. Did I put that in a schema somewhere? What if I look for con integer? Aha! Uh -huh. I did. Yes, here we go. Right, I had um already okay, so that means that I need to do a different entity number because this is that that five two three entity already has fields in it, but yeah, it's in a different format, okay, so I just need to use a different entity number. How about forty two and I really can't do a count. I need to actually get all of the information. I'm trying to think of how to do it in a way that I can reuse it for the other tables that I'm going to add. Nothing's coming to mind, so I'm thinking about I'll just make the first one in place here. And then once I see what's different from one table to another, then I'll go back and make a helper for this. So this is we're doing it raw. I... I suppose I want, well, I suppose I want to list the columns explicitly, right? I think so. So I was in this common, right? Let me pin that. Over here, actually. Yeah, I kind of want this, don't I? Well, par that without the types. There. So let's remove the types. So multi cursor, engage. Go to end of string, type comma, double quote. No comma at the last one. No parentheses, right? Now, should I pull that into one line? Uh, can I do this all with multi-cursor? I think I can. At least this much of it. There we go. Okay, from... This is where I need uh, this part. Character where E equals 42. That's what I want, right? And then I'm going to want to... After we fetch it, I'm going to want to get the actual data, right? All right, so that's fetch. That's fetch column for all of these columns, right? So then, um, uh, that's what I'm going to have here. Expect equal. I don't know. 
what's the entity? The entity is uh, 42. Does it... Do I really need to fetch that? I, don't, I think that's redundant. Let's not do that one. Uh, let's pick some things. Armor, let's say two for... Um, fetch column zero integer. Make them one line things. There we go. You updated your dictionary today and you noticed by looking into the log file that they used HSQLDB. Maybe the dictionary client is written in Java and that's why they chose HSQLDB. I don't know. Hey there, Grognosh. I've never heard of that database. Okay. Constitution, dexterity, hit points, hit points, max, intelligence, and strength, right? Hey there, Romania Hate. It's going all right. I'm doing the first set of tests for create, retrieve, update, and delete for um, the new database addition to the game. I um, fit SQLite actually because it fits the architecture a little, a little bit better than a lot of other databases. So to illustrate, here's the admin console to my game. And uh, this is a view of the server processes that are running in the back end of the game. I'm using the RAF consensus algorithm. So if you haven't heard about that, there's a link. Part of the RAF consensus algorithm is that every member of your cluster has its own copy of the data. So SQLite fits this really well because I can take the database engine and embed it directly in each process. And then it directly maintains its own private copy of the data. Fits into RAF really well that way. I don't need to have any other process share any particular server's database. They each have a copy. So I don't need um, elaborate like locking techniques. I don't need to have a separate s database process running somewhere. It's just directly integrate, integrated into the game. So there are a lot of features of larger databases I don't need, and SQLite doesn't have those features, didn't need them. So it fits, it fits pretty well there. But I did not tie my game's code directly to SQLite. I made a database abstraction layer. That looks like this where there's a pure virtual base class called database the implementations of this will deal in sql statements and the particulars are how to construct an object to execute a sql statement for that particular database so if i show you sqlite abstractions And I show you um, the build statement. It's SQLite 3 prepare v2, right? For MySQL, it would just be simply something else, but it would hopefully fit into the same interface where um, the implementation of build statement execute statement will just be for MySQL instead of for SQLite. Hey there, Cloudhawk. It's a multiplayer game, yeah. The Raft solution. I suppose it does introduce lag, but it but it also gives me a lot of cool things that I like to have. For example, I can upgrade, I can update or upgrade the game's code live without any uh, downtime, just by um, transitioning each cluster member individually to the next version. So, also the uh, there's re because of the built-in redundancy, each server has a copy of the game. If there's corruption, database corruption, or you know, process crashes. There are two other copies of the game, and we could just blow away the, the corrupted version and just replace it with a new copy. So it's uh, I like the error resiliency and the 99% uptime features of that. It introduces, introduces a little bit of lag, but I'm not making a game that is very sensitive to lag. I do need to have um, a little bit of client-side prediction to avoid the, the, uh, the most irritating parts of that lag, but once I put in that in there, it really won't matter if there's a little bit of lag because the tick rate is like four ticks per second. It's not like we're doing 20 ticks per second. So if there's a little bit of lag, it's fine, I think. Do all SQL res requests end up on the leader? Yeah, uh, no, all th they ends up on all, all three of them. Read re yeah, followers can, do, can handle read requests because they all, 
they all have their own database. So SQL re requests go to all three of them. So if uh, the other thing is that I'm only using the database for making snapshots, not it doesn't handle the um, reading per se. Uh, the only time we read from the database is when we're booting up the server. Once the server's running, it has a in-memory copy of of the game. Um, so yeah, read requests are satisfied directly by the in-memory copy. But most of it is going to be um, after we load the entire database into memory. Then we're just doing uh, writes to keep the snapshot up to date. Yep. We'll see if that design uh, holds. <laughs> it's possible I could be making a mistake, but I, I learn from mistakes. That's the whole goal, is to learn from our mistakes. So let me pick some numbers here. It doesn't really matter what I put. Let's put 16 constitution, I don't know, 22 dexterity. He's very dexterous. Let's put uh, 33, 34 hit points out of 35 intelligence maybe not too smart eight intelligence and he's a weakling too uh it's, maybe not so weak all right so these numbers have to match what i put into here right so if i put um armor i need to put two constitution dexterity hit points max integer strength constitution Dexterity, hit points, hit point max, intelligence, strength. Now let's add some other things that we aren't putting in the database, like foo as bar, just to throw things off. Should I also have something missing from the character component? Yeah, let's have some, let's have a missing thing. Let's say, for some reason, There's no armor reduction. So then what I would expect, I think, would be that the type, let's say, we'll expect a type of, um, actually, that doesn't play with, with fetch column, does it? Oh, that's how I handle nulls. Okay, great. So then, um, this is always returning a, a value object. Okay, so then I can do a null here. Right? Or, more precisely, I can say, um, I can put the type. I can say that null. And this is getting a little bit too long, so let's put it on two lines. In fact, I'm going to put it on a third line. Do that. Dot. Get type. There we go. So expect a null for the first column because armor is missing. There we go. And no problem, Grognash. Grognash sounds like a name for an orc character in World of Warcraft, doesn't it? Grognash. I am Grognosh. Equals is ambiguous. Oh, yeah. I need to actually do a cast here. Don't I? Where exactly? 62. Yes. Oh, all of these are ambiguous? Okay, fine. Let's do a cast to int. I have too many cast operators, so it's ambiguous which one we want. All right, so run them all. Yep, so they're all zero. Interesting that um, the assert actually happens. The, have, uh, the assert actually worked. We should check that it's not done on the first one, though. Yeah. Let's do it this way. So, const auto. Oh, I'm being raided by... It's Litany. Hey, there is Litany. How was your stream? I'm doing um, database stuff for my game. <laughs> 
Let me know if you have any questions. I can give a, sh a brief intro to the game, or you can just check out the video that Nui just linked to. Uh, what am I going to name this thing? Uh, select results. Equals that. And then I can say assert that there's no error. Then we're, what we're also going to do is assert false that it's done. And I think this is where it's going to fail, right? One of the asserts at the bottom passed. Uh, these expectations all failed. It was all zeros. But I expect actually, yeah, that's what I expected to happen. That it, w it was done when it shouldn't have been because it actually never, this never inserted a row. So when we select out the row, we shouldn't get nothing. I'm glad your stream went well, it's Litany. Let me, you or your raiders are welcome to ask me any questions. If you've never seen my stream before, this is the game that I'm making, and there's actually a player playing the game. And the player is linked to Twitch, so I can unmask them and see that it's a Stanislav. So my game is inspired by Ultima 4 and Ultima 5, which were games from the 1980s. So you can see that the kind of graphical style is kind of retro, old. That's okay. It's approachable by me as a programmer and um, a, no, a, a non-artist. <laughs> They've be seen a few bits of this in Live Coder Discord, but oh, thank you very much. So uh, my game is multiplayer. It's online now. There's no content yet. Still building up the engine. And it, uh, Stanislav just logged out. They disappeared. Maybe they couldn't face the um, being on stream. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Um, so currently the game runs, but there is a performance issue. And as we grow the game, it's going to get worse. The performance issue is that we store the entire state of the game in a JSON file, and you can see this is just my test environment. It's over 10,000 lines long. The bulk of it is in the Entity Component System, which is divided between different categories of components. So, for example, a door in the game, its data will be stored in the door component, you know, whether or not the door is open or whether it's locked, and uh, what to change when you close and open the door. Here, we're just changing for this kind of door. When you open or close it, it just changes the tile that we draw. So um, another example of a component might be an item. So here is the data for an item, the water of life, or another item, gold. So a pile of gold in someone's inventory. So because the design of my entity component system is pretty straightforward in that entities are divided into components, and components are just data storage, key value kinds of things, it seems to me that this fits pretty well in a relational database if we make each component type a table. Every row is an entity in that table, and every column is some kind of key some kind of key value pair for that particular component for that particular entity. So I'm going to I'm going to be taking this strategy to migrate my database, the new strategy. Right now it's all in JSON, right? So I'm going to be putting in parallel with that an SQLite implementation that's going to store the same stuff. And when I get everything that I care about in the SQLite, then I'm going to remove the JSON part and we'll be fully transitioned. So I had written this code to um, basically introduce an interface that's abstract so that if I choose to, I can move from SQLite to something else. And I wrote that, uh, I implemented that interface in terms of SQLite. And now I'm in the process of writing the game code that uses the interface. So the interface, I thought I pinned it. I guess I didn't. Let's pin it now. The interface kind of looks like this. So you build and execute SQL statements. And there's also some side functions for creating and installing snapshots. But most of the time, we're going to be dealing with SQL statements. And with a statement, you can bind input parameters. You can fetch output results. And you can reset statements and step them. The general order is you prepare a statement, then if it has parameters, you bind them, then you would, you would step them, and every step that it tells you that there is output, you would then fetch columns. And then when you're done, or when you're going to reuse the statement to execute the command again, you would reset. And in terms of uh, SQLite, for example, the bind statement 
the build statement um, is prepare um, version 2 of SQLite 3. So um, if this were to be implemented in terms of like Postgres or MySQL, the contents here would be different, but we would have the same interface and then the game would be able to use it. So other things that um, you may or may not recognize if you know SQLite, when we open our database, it's SQLite 3 open, and we close, it's close. And as far as like stepping, the, the, um, because I tried, we try, because I learned SQLite 3's C interface first, this um, abstract interface is kind of modeled after that, and I'm hoping that it's reasonably the same in other databases. So a step, that's why it, we use the same word, step is SQLite 3 step. And uh, fetch is SQLite 3 column, you know, the column functions. And uh, bind parameters is uh, SQLite 3 bind, and depending on type. So uh, there are a cu couple of um, the nitty gritty details here. You'll see that there's this type called value. It's really just a wrapper object for some kind of datum of any kind of type. So the different types that we support are the ones that kind of reflect what you'd have in a database. You might have a Boolean, you might have an integer, you might have a null, you might have a real number, you know, floating point or decimal, whatever, and then a text. And I also have in here some special types like invalid and error because there are certain scenarios where so something expects a value back, but there, if there was an error, we want to know. And in the context where like a value doesn't make sense, we would have a placeholder invalid value. So this value type is um, pretty much a, a variant where it can have uh, one thing of almost any type. And so there are a lot of different constructors, a lot of different typecast operators, assignment operators to get things in and out of different types. And uh, the bodies of these functions are all pretty small. Mostly it's just um, setting up the discriminator and then storing the actual data. And we store the data using a union. So um, pretty old school, but it works. Whenever you use a union, basically it is a structure where every field has the same address. And so um, it's saying we're storing one of these. We don't know which one by itself, unless you have a second variable called the discriminator that says which one. So if, this, if we were to set the type here to integer, that means we're probably using this integer field of the union. So anyway, I'm kind of talking through this because I expect people lurking or um, just joining and hadn't seen this work from before from last week might not know what the heck I'm doing might not know what a value is so just I'm just imagining what questions you might be asking and trying to answer them but if you have a question I'm not answering please let me know or if I'm going too fast you can tell me to slow down and I'll explain anything in particular but yeah my game is going to be going through this in this uh this uh, abstraction layer to get to SQLite 3 database. So when I'm working on my game code, you're going to be seeing not SQLite 3, but you're going to be seeing more generic like build statement, bind parameter, step. And just know that under the hood, the SQLite implementation translates that into SQLite 3 um, function calls. You just store some bytes and access them in a way dependent of the type. Yeah, so that when I build my um, tests, for example, See if I can find that. Yeah, it was there. It was there. I saw it. There it was. Uh, is this the right one? I think so. Where is a good example of this? I had a good example. Where was it? Yeah, like this, right? If you want to like bind here, bind. This is what bind parameters means, by the way. Um, if you want this statement to be the end result, but you want to make the statement built once so that you can reuse it for different actual values, you um, would build the statement with these question mark placeholders. And those are filled by parameters that you bind. So bind in computer science usually means to take two things, usually a value and a specification, and, and glue them together. So in this case, the statement is specified to have these you know, open-ended, you know, we don't know what we're going to have there now, but we'll tell you later kind of things. And bind basically takes these actual values and plugs them in place where these question marks are. So with my value type, it allows me to have constructions that are easier to read as a human. And it makes sense, right? You're going to, we're going to put the string guard for the job. We're going to put 1.23 for the time, and we're going to put 1 for the entity. 
But C++ being a very strict type language wouldn't know how to handle that unless we put that value type that we specified that it can have different kinds of constructors and different kind of type casts so that when it encounters a context where it needs to have a, a value type, but you give it a, a, a decimal, it's like, okay, I know how to handle that because value type has a decimal, a double constructor, right? In fact, when I mouse over it, you can see that, um, or can I do that? Okay, it's, I can't, the IntelliSense won't help me out here. It just tells me that that number is close to 1.23, right? <laughs> if I were to show you the implementation here, you can see that it takes an initializer list of const value. And this is where the sort of the magic of that one type that holds many different possible types works is that this code doesn't know if it's an integer or a string, but in this individual bind parameter, it has an internal switch statement that says, well, if the value thing, if its discriminator says it's text, we're going to call the bind text. If it's integer, we're going to use bind integer. So I got to write this once and button it up so that when we look at how, when we're using it, it, it looks very natural. We don't have to worry about the type so much. Yeah, 1.23-ish. <laughs> By the way, ran, ran, random aside is that computers have a hard time with some decimal numbers because they do not store them internally as base 10 digits like we write them. They are stored in using base 2, and it turns out that 1.23 is impossible to write uh, precisely in base 2. So the reason why you see 1.229999, that's as close as we can get with the number of bits that we're allowed to use with a double type. That's as close as we can get to 1.23 in base 2. Your favorite tool is the IEEE 754 convo converter? Yeah, so double is IEEE standard 754. If you look that up, it'll tell you all the gory details about how computers these days actually store floating point values. Thank you for the resub, Jackimus, for three months. That's for single types, but the same, yeah. So du the reason why it's another random fact, why it's called double, and why is what's double? If there's, there must be a... Uh, a uh, single or it might be a triple, right? Double is refers to double preci uh, double precision, as in twice the the precision of the first. The traditionally um, the the first type that was used for floating point values was 32 bits, and double just doubles it to 64 bits. It's really just adding more precision. It doesn't let you store larger numbers. It lets you store numbers with more significant digits. But anyway, this, you can see it's a lot of nines. If I were to use a, a single precision floating point, you'd have fewer nines, about, about half as many. <laughs> it's not actually twice the precision because, yeah, of those 32 or 64 bits, one of the bit has to go to the sign, you know, plus or minus, and then about, uh, I'd say like a fifth of the bits go to the um, exponent. If you know scientific notation, that would be... Uh, 1.23 times 10 to the power of 0, right? So this being the mantissa or the significant figures, and then this being the exponent, some of the bits in the double go to the, 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 the digits, and, and some of the other bits go to the exponent. Internally, it's going to be 2 to the power of something, but you get the idea. Technically, doubles can store bigger numbers as well because the mantissa gets more bits. It's that the exponent gets more bits, right? Not that the mantissa gets more bits. The mantissa is about precision, and the exponent's about uh, large and smallness. Yeah, and kind of conversely, doubles can store smaller numbers too, numbers closer to zero, because you can get the negative exponent to be a larger negative. You almost fail the course about this stuff. I I I find this stuff kind of interesting. To kind of give people an insight into the like, why do you see thing? Why do you see names like double? What does double mean? And why, when I mouse over one dot twenty three, do you see one dot two two nine 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 nine? You know, I I'm the kind of person who asks like, why is that? Why isn't the computer know it's one point twenty three exactly? And it's because of the the devils in the details, how computers store numbers, or how humans have decided to have computers store numbers, being base two and not base ten, et cetera, et cetera. It it opens up an entire field that I could you know talk for days about. <laughs> But yeah, back to the point, um, I am trying to make my game store its data in a database, 
but I'm doing it step by step and I want to do each step so that I can look back at the requirements of each step and be able to read it and that anyone watching my stream can, if I'm looking at a particular test, anybody who's watching could have a reasonably good idea or guess about what it's doing. So this particular test, you can see that it's expecting that we can fill in these values for these placeholders in a statement and that we get the same result as if we had plugged those numbers in directly. That's what this comparison database set up. We set up a database which is the same as the one under test, only we're adding an additional statement that is what we expect this to actually do when we step it, right? Devil's in the detail, or doubles in the detail. Yeah, exactly. Once, down, once went down a float wormhole with one of your coworkers when you were on an internship. And you learned so much about them, yeah. If you just look up, like... Um, I don't know. I'm a fan of uh, Wikipedia, right? So if I do Wikipedia IEEE 754 and just look at it, um, it might not be like the the best introduction, but they get into so many like details about it, and you can see the different what different precisions mean. And um, here's the actual. This is a really nice picture, I think. If a lot of people don't consider like of the 32 or 60 point, 64 bits that go into a float, what what means what? And this tells you exactly what it is. The, the topmost one is a sign, and then you have the exponent, and then you have the fraction parts. And they even have an example for you to show you what it means. Um, but yeah, you can you can dive pretty deep into this stuff, and especially if you go into the math. <laughs> And um, the C also, you can spend you can spend days and days just trolling or um, not trolling, uh, exploring through um, the articles that are linked to from from that. You're trying to figure out a bug and writing a test. It was epic. Oh yeah, you have to be really careful when you're doing tests that check for the equality of numbers when they are floating point numbers. Because if I were to like add. 0.23 to 1, it won't actually ever be equal to 1.23 because of the error involved in the arithmetic. Um, so that's why in a lot of these uh, test frameworks, there's there's an expect equal, and then there's also an expect near. And near is what you want to use for floating point values that are computed as a result of some arithmetic. So um, there you see, you give the expected and the actual, and you give a fudge factor, an, an absolute um, error that it can, um, the, the, the maximum that the two can be, can be off from one another. And that's what you always want to do if we do arithmetic with floating point numbers in tests. <laughs> floating point equality is hard, yes. The best you can do is estimate the error, and there are um, mathematical ways to um, compute that, but you can, you can put some fudge factor in there. Is that an actual website? <laughs> oh, that is an actual website. Look at that. That's cool. I like that one. Let me give you a point, Nui. Your C-Sharp ID actually warns you whenever you do any... Yeah, exactly. Compilers can actually be pretty smart and realize that you're doing a comparison after arithmetic and say, eh, you might not ever get exactly the same. <laughs> All right, um, let me continue back on where I was working. What was I doing? Actually, I don't know what I was doing. Let's uh, build and see where I, where I am. I think I was on these tests here, right? Yes. So I'm I'm working on the character table that show that stores attributes for characters in my game. I want to make sure that when we create a character, that that the components that go into the character, or the um, attributes that go into the character are stored in the database. That's what, that's what this does. It says, create the character through the EC, in, in Entity Component System API, and then behind the scenes we ask the database, hey, give me the attributes of character 42, and we should actually get back all the same numbers. Actually, the numbers need to be the same, don't they? We should get back whatever numbers we put in. So that was 16, whoops, 16, 22, 35, I'm just copying from the bottom there. 35, 8. And these numbers are, don't have any significance. I just need them to be different so that we verify that what number we associate with con for constitution there comes back on the first column because con is listed there. It's actually not the first column, it's the second column, but you get the idea. We're skipping armor because armor is um, should be null because we didn't specify it. 
It's human error from human base 10 expectations. I suppose so. Uh, let's not switch to base 2, Nui. Right, we have 10 fingers. 10 is a good base for us. Computers only have two fingers on and off, and so it's a better base for them. <laughs> All right. So I like to set up tests first. This test is checking something we don't have code for, which is why it fails. It fails right here. Basically, the statement is done when it shouldn't be done because it's trying to select a row which d never got added because this didn't actually insert a row. Hope that makes sense. They have infinitely many hands with two fingers. I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Every hand has only two fingers. On and off. Okay, so the code that implements the entity component system create component of type is here. And here's where we store it in the JSON. I think it's the easy, easy thing to do here would be to add some more helpers. I can just invent them right now, right? Impl uh, insert. Oh, I'm being raided by someone. Tail learn code. Thank you for that raid. Welcome, raiders. I uh, have been giving an introduction kind of rolling while I'm working, but if you have any questions, let me know. I'm working on the transition of data for this game I'm working on from a huge JSON value to an actual database. And just for some perspective, I'll show you what is currently in this test environment for um, the JSON file that stores the game state. It's over 10,000 lines long. It is a performance bottleneck for my game's code right now. Most of it being in this component section, you can see 10,000 out of 11,000 lines. And this is divided by the types of different components of um, things in the game world. For example, a door might look like that. It's an open door which is unlocked, right? And an item in the game. I like to look at the second item here because it's a pile of money. I like money. So this, I think, fits a database pretty well, where this is a row in a database table, and these are the columns, and the table itself might be named item. So instead of storing this into a big JSON object, which is slow and tedious, I'm moving this into a database. Kind of like this, where right now the game talks to JSON directly. We're going to add in parallel to that an SQLite database, and then remove the JSON when once we have parity, or we have the same data stored in both, we can then drop the JSON out, right? And um, I have chosen to abstract away the um, game's functions into the database using a database interface, so that I, if I later I decide I don't like SQLite as much as some other database, I can just replace just the implementation of the database inter uh, interface and not have to touch the game anymore. So um, let me know if you have any specific questions. I'm going to get back to work here. On um, This is whenever we create an entity in the game, we create components for the entity. And every time we create an entity component, we should insert a row in the table for that component type. This is what we're trying to do. I already did delete. Now we're doing create. So the, create, the delete had these pairs. I'm wondering if I should do the same thing. The create statement is going to be different for each kind of table, so I think I need to construct that differently. I think I know what I want to do. In fact, I can actually leave the prototypes the same. For execute, though, I need to have an initializer list, I believe. Actually, you know what I can do? I can use the JSON value directly. That's what I'll do. Okay, so let's make the prototypes for create. I'll put them right here. Instead of delete, it's going to be create. Create. So pretty sure we need to pass in data for the create. So I'm going to do it with a JSON value. Because that's the format in which we um, get it through here. This creating When we create a component of some type for an entity, the data is given as a JSON object. We need to translate that JSON object into the parameters that go into an SQL statement to store that data in a database row, a database table row. So I guess it's just component because it matches this component, right? 
Uh, I don't know how I got there. I must have slipped on the keyboard. There we go. Back to where I was. The statement is going to be different for every kind of component type, so I'll use this as a key into a table of column names. That's what I'm going to do. So let's implement these out here, I suppose. All right, let's get, let's put a a marker there because we're going to get back to there in a second. And I'm going to go to where that is defined and paste the bodies of those two functions. Base infinity, Nui, that would be, that's brilliant. That you'd only need one digit for anything. I like that. Let's do it. Something that you're not sure if you looked at was dynamically creating deleting tables if you create a new component. I, I think we're not going to be creating and deleting whole tables. I'm going to leave the creating of deleting of tables to the migration scripts. So I haven't actually written the migration script yet, though. But the closest is in the test environment we have it. This, I think it would be really complicated for the game to be creating and del deleting tables dynamically. So pretty sure I'm going to be going with database migration scripts for that kind of thing. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Yeah, so like, if there are no characters in the game, we'll still have a character table, but they won't have any rows. I hope that makes sense. And if later, like, I need a new kind of component, that means I'll probably want to create a database migration, basically change our schema to basically add a table. Add a new table. Suppose creating a component type requires C++ implementation. Uh, not exactly, because we have this database abstraction now, so that the management of data is through an interface. No, thank you. I was just offered slightly undercooked pancakes, by the way. Hey there, Shmelly Orc. Why not MongoDB? It's pretty much Bison JSON. Um, don't, I don't know MongoDB. It's on my list of things to look at, though. MongoDB. Mostly going with SQLite right now because it was recommended by several viewers and also it fit my game's architecture pretty well. I talked about this earlier. The game runs on a raft cluster. So because of it running on a raft cluster, one, one part of that nature is that every server is supposed to have its own copy of the data that it uses exclusively. So it doesn't need to share that database with anyone else. So the fact that SQLite... It's a database engine I can embed directly into the game server. And the fact that SQLite stores this data in a file that's private for that server all pretty well fits pretty pretty well fits my um pretty well fits. Fits pretty well the architecture I already have. But it doesn't say that I close the door on MongoDB or anything else. It just means that I decided to to go with this as the, the leading candidate. So once I get around to it, which I don't know when that'll be, I'll want to evaluate these other databases as um, in comparison. If it turns out that one of these databases is more has like something really really cool, like maybe it's a hundred times faster than SQLite, and if the trade-offs are so that the pros outweigh the cons, I could see myself totally switching to some other database. So to set up that possibility. In my migration plan, I really have the game split away from the actual database implementation through an interface. So if I were to go to my um, database interface here and implement this in terms of MongoDB, we'd be good to go. Yeah. So the answer to why not this or that for me usually comes down to I have to try something first. And... If it's a not, it's usually it's just, it just means it's a not yet or not now because I have to I can't do the, all of these databases simultaneously. I got to pick one to start with. It doesn't mean I'm never going back. So these are still on the table. As much as possible, I like to leave doors open so that I can go back and change my mind when I learn more. I learn usually learn by making mistakes, learn from failure, and so um, keeping the door open to go back and switch to something else. Um, fits that, um, you know, kind of trial and error scientific approach that I try to, to, to take. All right. Uh, by the way, did you guys know that Shmeli Orc is a, another streamer here on Twitch who has 
been streaming a lot longer than I have. You should check out his stream. He makes awesome pixel graphic art games. And he's got a cool... What, do you, what would you call it? A Kermit? That dances 24-7 on his, on his stream. At least, I hope you still do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not really a game dev. I am uh, a novice trying to be game dev. If you want to see a real game dev, watch Shmiliorks stream. I am mostly coming at this from a background of a lot, making a lot of demo apps and a lot of embedded programming, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, prototype stuff, and saying I've always wanted to make a game, and I know fundamentals of implementing protocols and designing systems. Let's see if I can make a game out of it. So um, I lean heavily on the expertise of game devs who've done this before and so I actually hang out and lurk in a lot of game dev streams and try to pick up things from from that. Some people like it, some people hate it, some people go crazy and headbang. <laughs> yeah, it's unique. It makes you different from everyone else, which is good. All right. Let me um try to r remember where Oh, that's right. I was working on this. So constructing a delete statement. Let's take a leaf a, a page from that book and copy it over here. So a create is going to be an insert into, right? Create, in, insert into some table uh, values. Actually, uh, we want to be specific about the columns and then their values, right? So we know the component type, but I don't know what to put in for these yet. That's we'll get to this. That's create statement. Okay, and this is just constructing it, right? So I should probably have something to do with um, which table this goes for, right? So let's place in here. I'm trying to think. I already have that as a string, so I don't need to make a formatted string here, do I? I just need to make a whole bunch of extra strings with parentheses between them. Like that. Yes, and I'm going to do the same thing in where I copied this from, which is very similar. We should have this one be a delete statement, and this one be a create statement. Yeah. Okay. So then next, I need to have something here. So it would be like um, uh, component columns. And the other one would be um, for the placeholders, it's um, component value placeholders. So the way I'm thinking about doing this is building these from a table. So we would imagine we have some table that looks like this, static const vector, or unordered map from string to vector. I know this is ugly, but bear with me. Columns, and we constructed it like this. We, for, for, uh, for example, the character, table, we would have a vector of the different uh, fields for a character. So here they were, right? We have the entity, the armor, the constitution. So this is literally what I want to put in here. E, armor, constitution, dexterity, hit points, hit point max, intelligence and strength, right? So if we had that table, and then um, this basically becomes our like um, digested version of our database schema in terms of building what we need to put in the statement, then we could um, search for the entry in columns that matches this column type, right? So it would be something like, um, uh, what would it be? Const auto columns entries columns dot find component type 
And let's say we don't know how to store this. So we would do something like if columns entry is columns end. It means we couldn't find it, right? Let's just have it return early and say, well, we don't know how to store that. So let's not even bother. But if we can, then um, we can build the components and base value placeholders by iterating through that vector. So we can do this. We can say for const auto, uh, what are we going to call this column? In columns entry arrow second. And we would say, um, oh, we, we're going to use, be using a builder, I think. Let's do O string stream. Let's do, let's just use these names, right? And if those are builders for strings, then I'm going to want to have a str here and then a c string. You want to make a bug report, should you do it using the ticket system? You can either use the in game ticket system or you can use the issues link or the issues uh, GitHub. If you put it in game, I'll end up probably just using my own tools to generate an issue in GitHub. But if you want to go directly to GitHub, you're always welcome to do that. Might be interested in this, but people that made Node.js made a new system that replaces Node. No mess. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, it's uh, it was it it uh, it showed up on some headlines I was reading about, right? Yeah. So Grognash, there are over a hundred different issues in the game, so it's possible. You're running into to something new. It's also possible you're running into something we already know about. Either way, you're welcome to either uh, search for the existing issues in the GitHub, and uh, you're also welcome to put in a new one. If it ends up being a duplicate, no big deal. I'll probably just link it to the existing issue in GitHub. No problemo. Yeah, Dino. That's what it was. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. And that's your first point here. Your useless internet point in my stream, so you get a second one. Yay! Dino, yeah, if you just search the recent news in JavaScript, you'll probably run into Dino. I think also Adam's Discord, it was talked about there. Dino.land, there you go. There you go, yeah. Nice, thank you, Grognosh. I'll give you a point, and that's also your first point, so I'll give you a second one as well. Yeah, I saw the headline, but I didn't get into the details. I am mostly a C++ programmer, so JavaScript, I'm still a novice. I'm still learning, so I didn't feel qualified to go investigate Dino. I figure I'll let the people who know how to do JavaScript better than I can digest that for a while, and then they, if they tell me I should switch, then I probably would look into it. Yeah. Um, if, if there's some new C++ thing, then I'd be a lot more quick to go read it. <laughs> Although, you know, that said, I'm still on C++ 11. When am I going to get off my butt and learn C++ 17 and 20? I don't know. One of these days. Still look at the triple equal thing. The triple equal thing actually makes a little bit of sense to me now. In that um, double equal is... Uh, uh, it's like if you had two pointers in C. So let's say you had const care A equals hello. And you had const care B equals hello. And let's say your compiler was not optimizing, right? So then what happens if you do A equals B? Right? Is it true or false? It's probably false unless your compiler was smart enough to do um, coalescing of constants, right? But when you do a string compare A, B, that's going to be true, right? So to me... This is um, similar to JS equals. This is similar to JS triple equal. Yeah. So that's how I've tried to remember it from a C, C++ background, is that the double equals in JavaScript is a referential equality. It means do these, do these references point to the same thing? Whereas triple equal is a deeper, like actually looking at the two values and see, are they actually exactly the same? Now that's, I, I, I say it's similar to because I know it's not precisely that, but for me, nine times out of 10 or more, maybe more, um, it fits. It fits for the way my brain thinks of um, testing equality. 
that these point to the same object? No. Do do they have are their contents the same? Yes. Yeah. So anyway, that's let's save that as a stream note. I've been doing this more often. Stream notes, and I want to say um that this is uh JS equality um mindset as a C developer text. When am I switching to TypeScript? I made the first step, Void Confil. Uh, one of my viewers, I think it was Aiden Garth, made a pull request for the Minesweeper clone that I made, and that pull request was to introduce TypeScript just as far as telling me with IntelliSense if I was doing things wrong, and so TypeScript is now used in in VS Code for me when I work on that Minesweeper clone, just to tell me if I have errors in in the logic. I'm not actually using it at runtime though, but I made that first step, Void Confil. <laughs> Structural equality is the way to go. You mean like deep comparisons of structures? Double equals just checks the content, so nine is nine equals nine is true, but nine. Right, the string is not the same. Yeah, that's the part of double equals I don't quite like. The fact that um, double equal not not just tests reference equality, but it also does it like a typecast kind of thing. I, I try not to to use that because it just doesn't seem right to me. In fact, you get you get warnings from uh, from different uh, tools with which are integrated into VS Code, like with Create React App, that what, it's, what it sets up, it constantly nags me whenever I use double equal. And so I think what it's trying to get at is, don't use double equal, unless you really, really have to. <laughs> yeah, you always use triple equal, probably because a lot of things guide you to, usually double equal is, well, not usually, double equal can be more error prone, triple equal is less error prone. You open 10 more tabs, there you go. That's one thing that I like about my stream that I try to encourage is to just chatting about different subjects and we get interested in learning new things. I learn a lot from you guys, that's for sure. Okay, so I want to build these, right? And there's a special thing about lists where the first thing doesn't have a comma before it. So I'm going to have a first is true. And in here we'll say if not, if first. No, if not first. Then we want to add a comma, right? So component, component, column. Oh, it doesn't like those because I haven't in, pulled in the required header, which is S stream. Okay, so component, column, shift in a comma. And component value placeholders as well. So first is false, right? So the component columns is going to shift in the column and component value placeholders is going to shift in the question mark, right? And as long as I put a comma there, now what this becomes is a comma separated list of the names of the columns column value placeholders becomes a comma separated list of question marks so it fill, fills it fits this pattern precisely and then i can just move this table somewhere else and then put the um maybe more global and then um whenever i would either add a column to an existing table or add a table i would need to make sure that this t this is up to date it has to match our schema so um do i want to do that now or do it later i could do i can do it later do the lazy programmer approach where we just wait until we need to reuse it somewhere else and then put it somewhere more global. Okay, I think this wait, right, this would work if we used it, but nothing's using it yet. And I don't have the execute done yet. So we need to actually implement the execute and then use both of them. If there is a create statement, actually, shouldn't I turn this around and say, if there's not, then just return? Then we don't need so much indentation. Yeah. So if there's not a create statement, just return. I'll, and then we can unindent that. All right, so create statement. 
So there, here's where it gets a little bit complicated. We can't just bind one thing. We have to bind many things based on this component. And actually, this is where I think I want to use this here, right? Yeah, I want to reuse this now. So let's move it out. Where to move it to, though? I suppose I just move it to the top somewhere up here? Where other um, tables are? Do I have any tables? I don't really have any tables. Here, let's put it right here. And because it's more global, I probably wanted to have a more global name. So let's say um, column specifications. There, that, that's a more important sounding name, right? And then um, this should say column specifications. Like that. Okay, and then we're going to do the same kind of thing. Well, not the same kind of thing. With this column specifications, we're going to um, enumerate them down here, right? Yes. In fact, I'm going to do this exact same code down here. So not only does there need to be a create statement, but there needs to be an entry for... Oh, wait a second. We don't have component type. Uh, yeah, we'll need that. So const standard string component type. Which means I gotta go back to where this was declared and add that. Right here? Uh, I need the whole line, please. Thank you very much. All right. So we need to have a create statement and we need to have the column specification entry because we're gonna use that to loop through for this bind, right? So similarly to this list here, I am going to want to have Oh, similarly to that loop there, we're going to have a loop here. And this number starts at zero in increments, so we'll have a um, column number that will just increment every loop, like so. Okay, and then this column number goes here, and then this value is derived from what's in the JSON, right? Don't I need to know the type? Actually, uh, I don't. No, I, I can I can convert from to the JSON type. That's what I can do. So makes me want to have another um, helper for this. Uh oh, VS Code froze for a second there. That's a bad sign. VS Code has been like doing weird things to me. When it starts to freeze, it makes me worry that it's start to, going to start to do what it did a couple days ago and start consuming all of my RAM and then locking my system up. It's not a RAM stream if you don't open more con tabs. Yeah, it froze. It's like winter in uh, VS Code for, for a moment there. I just noticed I haven't said hi in a long time to a bunch of people. So let me go back to the person who has been chatting here, the, who I haven't said hi to in a long moment. So I f the, f the first person my stream helper says I didn't say hi to is It's Litany. So let me say hi. And then I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling to find the next person. How come I can't? F my eyes are not helping me out here. At 1020, NS George asked, Does JSON performance get worse the larger the object? Yes, basically. Oh, Gadam gifted a sub to Void Confil. Thank you, Gadam. That's very nice of you. Void Confil is now a sub. And I never said hi to Schmeliorc. Why not? Hi. And then Edgard, I never said hi to you either. I'm looking for where your chat was to see if I missed something. That was at 1031. Oh, right. I, I saw that one. I just never said hi. And Voight Comp Phil, I didn't say hi to you. Cthulhu, I didn't, I didn't see your message at all. I'll do that later. Quoted from Raimu. Yes, exactly. Hey there, Cthulhu. I'm sorry I didn't acknowledge you guys before. I have corrected that problem. <laughs> yeah, thank you again, Gadam, for gifting that sub to Voight Comp Phil. All right. Yeah, I think I want a helper for this because 
this is going to come up again for the update statement, right? That the type of the the type of the component entry is need to translate from JSON to the database, right? Okay. So let's just envision that I have um, a helper that does this. Convert from JSON to database value, right? What, are, what should I name it? It's not going to be entity. It's going to be... Um, a JSON to DB. That's what I'm going to call it. And we're going to fetch from component using the column. Uh, column is what? Is that a string? It is. So exactly, we're going to index the component to fetch it. I should probably see if it's present, though. Actually, we can. what we can do is JSON to DB, if it fetches a null or invalid JSON value, you can just insert it as null. That'll work. Okay, so this, I just need to invent that. Let's put a, a marker there. This should have been... Uh, Okay, I messed up here. What did I do for... Yeah. For the error messages... Error message for uh, this one, construct statement, we should have a similar thing for execute statement. But oh, but this one, should, instead of building, should say stepping. Error stepping blah create statement. Step result error. There we go. And then this should be error stepping delete statement, right? Error stepping blah delete statement. There. And oh, we're not given the component type. Shoot. I guess we'll include it just because we need it for the diagnostic message. I hate to do that just for a diagnostic message, but eh, fine. Oh, thank you for that follow. I appreciate that. So that goes uh, here. All right. Delete, delete, and then here's create. Okay, so I need to invent this one, right? This is a free function, which should go here, I think. Another gifted sub to NS George from Gadam. Thank you again, Gadam. Very, very generous viewer. I hope that uh, you guys are enjoying the stream. This needs to convert, here's the name. What I need back out is a database abstractions value. And what we pass in is a JSON value. JSON. All right, and then um, we'll, do a, we'll do a good deed here and write a comment to say what this function does. Convert the given value from JSON to database L, a database uh, uh, what is the thing database datum sure this is the value in JSON the equivalent value in the, the equivalent database datum is returned there we go easy easy all right, so then this is all going to be about a big switch statement, right? So switch JSON get type case JSON value type. Uh, I cannot type today. Type. We're not going to worry about arrays and objects yet, but that might be a problem later. Let's do the boolean first. Return. We'll just use this one's constructors. A <gasps> hundred bits from Gadam. Should I stretch? Okay. It's been an hour and a half. Well, just for you, Gadam, because you gave me a hundred bits, I will um, do that. So, hold on. Let me finish this. Yeah, you know, I'll 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 tell you what. I'll finish the switch statement and then I'll stretch because this will be this will be pretty quick, right? We just need to um, convert this to a bool, uh, the JSON to a bool. 
Yeah, and can I fit that all in one line? It's actually better to have it like that. And for default, let's just have it return um, null. Actually, I don't need to be explicit about the construction either. I can just do that. And I can do null pointer. Because this thing has constructors for these different types already. So I just need to put in the ones I care about, right? Integer. Int max t. And um, string goes to... Uh, this one has a string constructor, right? Yes. And then I also had a decimal, right? Des... What do I call it? Do I call it floating point? Floating point. Double. I think I'll do, those are the ones I really care about. We'll do object and array are, are problems, but we've done these ones. And then, the yeah, the default will just be null. So I think that's what I need. Hey there, Mr. Sleeper. Uh-oh, it failed. Oh, it failed on line 1119. Oh, right, because we need to add the column type. Because I added that. And then on uh, line 2432, again. Uh, okay, we don't have... Okay, type is is what we should pass, not the other thing. Aw, that's not a that's not a nice thing to say, Nui. Come on. What's up? What's up is uh what the today command says. The um big project I'm working on is this game, right? I'm walking around in my own game world. These slimes are congregating there. That's interesting. Usually they spread out. But anyway, um the data behind my game, which is online, you can play now here. I see. Which, yeah, we're, but we knew what they, what, we knew what um, Mr. Sleeper meant, right? <laughs> uh, how my game stores its data now is in a, a tremendously huge JSON object, and this is giving performance issues to my game. So it's like it slows down the game, loading and saving. It's really slow. The bulk of the data is in my game's entity component system which is divided into um, groups based off of the kinds of data that we need to store about game objects. For example, um, items in the game are stored like this. So um, an item is an object with an entity, and um, that entity has numerous pieces of data attached to it, and the most important thing for an item is, of course, the item component which says what the name of the item is, what kind of item it is, and how many of it there is. So this is 230 gold out of a maximum stack of 1,000 gold, right? So transitioning this to a database is the goal for um, this pretty much this month to um, increase the performance of the game. So this fits a database schema where item is a table. This um, particular item is a row in that item table. And each of these is a column of a row of the item table. So I'm um, adding code right now to go in parallel with the JSON, but store it in, in an actual database. And I have abstracted away the actual interface, the, the, the database, so that the game goes through an interface to go to it, so that I can switch the actual database vendor to a different one later if I want to, and not have to go back and change my game code. I just would need to re-implement my database interface. So I already have a database interface I implemented for SQLite, so I'm using that today to work on this game to database interface to actually test it. It's going, um, and every time we um, make a change to the components, it's going to make the corresponding change to the database. So specifically what I'm working on right now is this test down um, here that when we create a character with these attributes, that those attributes end up going into the database. And we check to make sure that happens by selecting those components back out from the database using SQL. So um, the actual construction of the SQL statement to, to insert this into the database is what we're testing. And as soon as I get that working, I'm going to go stretch because it's been all about an hour and a half and I've been sitting here 
We need to get up and stretch every once in a while, right? We can't be sitting in one spot all day and all that stuff. Um, let me go use my bookmarks thing. I want to go to that. Right. This used the the JSON to DB. It uses the bind parameter. So this, act, this act should actually work to pass that test, right? As long as I call these things. That's the important thing. So I'm not actually using those yet. We need to actually use them. Did I make a pin for where we actually... Yeah, right here. And here it is, right? So we need to... Um, what did I call it? Build? I can't remember where I called it. Construct. Construct. It's impl. Construct. Create statement. And um, the create statement would be a... Oh, we don't have a space to put it. Okay, I need to add that. So in addition to the delete entity, we'll have a create entity. Create. Maybe we should just call it create. Nah, it should have parity with the delete, right? Okay, and um, so we have a store entry, right? So it's store entry dot um, create entity. And then the component type is uh, type. So that makes sure that the SQL statement exists, right? So next we'll do a um, execute create statement. And it's the same things. These two are the same. And then the third argument is the component. And the fourth argument is the entity. There we go. That's all I should need to do. Okay, hopefully this passes the test. And then um, I can go on a quick break to stretch. So again, the test was making sure that um, when we go through that function to create a component of a given type, that it should insert this data into the database. Oh, I got you too confused. It wasn't Mr. Sleeper who asked what's up. It was MC Asco. <laughs> it, the colors fooled me, I think. And they both begin, your names both begin with an M. So I got confused who was talking. Okay, my tests are here. Run the test again. It's still failing. It's... Hmm. It didn't actually create it. So let's debug it. It should have run through here and done it. Debug. So let me step into this. Okay, so it should get down to here. So go to that. So there's my list, E comma armor comma com, all that stuff. And they're the placeholders. So it builds a statement. Is there... Right, so it didn't error. So we have a statement. And now we're going to execute the statement. So maybe it's the execution that didn't work. Reset the statement, and now we're binding all the parameters. Right, this one went to the default because the armor was um, a null, right? This one, though, it should be um, found. Oh, it's not. They're all nulls? Interesting. Hey there, Clayman. Okay, so this probably isn't working. What's column? Yeah, armor. Oh, I think I know what's going on. It didn't bind the entity number correctly. That's what it was. Okay, so I um, this it's gonna it's gonna result in an error. So if I go down to here, I bet you we'll get, we'll see an error. No, there's no error. There's no error, but um, the entity number won't be correct. It'll be a null entity. It actually should have errored. 
I thought that if you do a null for a primary key, it would give you an error. Maybe not, though. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. I, I know what the problem is, though. Um, when we um, construct the create statement, we just pulled in the entity number um, blindly. Um, so I need to be careful about that. Where are my columns? Um, column specifications. This E, I think we should not have that there. That should be sp that should be special. I'll remove that, and then I have to be careful about where I use these column specifications. Right, when we create, we should just add that in. Actually, this simplifies it a little bit, doesn't it? No, I don't need to. Yeah, I, I can just put it here. E comma, and then this value would be a decimal, right? And I would put that right here, entity. Did I not get that right? Oh, it it is a parameter. So there would be an extra parameter. Right. Right, okay, and but then in the execute, it's the same thing. Um, we need to start at column one, because we actually have to bind the... Um, Entity to column zero. So that's entity. There we go. That should fix it, I hope. <laughs> this week will be interesting. You'll know if you have a new job or not. Oh, Monka Shake. Good luck, Jalmega. And hey, by the way. And hey there, Clayman. How are you to do, doing today? And I never said hi to MC Asco. I'm sorry about that. And Peanut Butter Jelly Times. What's the issue you got in? I don't have an issue. It's a test I'm uh, getting to pass. I'm doing test-driven development. So this particular test is checking to make sure that when we tell my entity component system to create a component of type character with these attributes, that it translates that into a database statement that and executes it so that when we pull the data back out, the data is what we expect. And now it passes because I just fixed it. <laughs> Had an almost four-hour interview. It Wow. So is that like where you go to different interviewers? Because that's how it was at uh, Qualcomm when I interviewed. And when I was an interviewer, um, and the interview process was usually four to eight hours long, depending on, I guess, the um, the role. We would have, yeah, at least three or four different interviewers, and then they would meet afterwards and discuss and say whether they were a pass or, or not. Multiple different people, yeah, that's... That's what I came to came to feel was the standard, but I only w worked at one other company before, so. All right, I'm going to take a quick break because I got this test passing. Now we have um, three out of four tests passing. I just need to, when I come back from the break, I'm going to do set entity component type, which is translated as an update. So this was an insert. The other one was a delete. And um, now we're be the next one will be an update. Hey there, Gant. What language am I writing in C++? And specifically, we're writing here unit tests using Google Test, which you can read about... Um, not read about. You can... Um, I spelled it wrong. You can watch a video that I made that goes through how I set this up, but uh, it's using Google Test and uh, in a unit test scenario where we're, we're testing this components object, which is my game's entity component system, it has overall interface methods to um, create and destroy components in my game. And we're making sure that in addition to operating on its current JSON data, it's also updating a database. So we're adding a database in parallel to the JSON storage for my game right now. So, yeah. C++. I'm going to take a quick break because someone asked me to stretch and they gave me 100 bits, so I have to oblige. Also, it's almost been two hours anyway. If you've been sitting around for two hours like I have, uh, this is a good opportunity to get up and stretch, get something to drink, use the restroom, that kind of thing. I won't be long. Let's just make it uh, three minutes and I will be right back.
I'm back. Hope you had an opportunity to get up and take a break as well as I did. Uh, okay. So, I did create, destroy. Now we're going to do update. Thank you, Nui. I think this should be easier. Because it's going to be a lot like create, only it's going to be an update. You took a break before. Oh, okay. That's fine, too. So, I think what I want to do is have this, but instead of... Uh, hold on. Yeah, I think I want to just want to copy this, right? And adjust it to be an update instead of a um, create. So instead of create, it's going to be a set. And so we have to use our existing entity, 523. And I can, I guess I can use these same numbers as long as they're different from the ones that the common setup. Yeah, they're different, right? Actually, uh, this one will had, had armor before, now it's going to be removed. Let's make one not change. How about we'll make this one stay at 18 out of 24. But everything else changes, right? So then that was... 18, 24, but everything else stays the same. Okay, and so that's 523. Let's build it. And run it, it's gonna fail because it didn't actually change the database, right? So um, the armor didn't change. The um, These didn't change like they should have, these didn't change. Those didn't change because we didn't change them. Okay. So it failed it failed like I expected it. So let's move to actually do the code. So um really just need to add two lines, right? And I need to add them in set component set entity component type here. In fact we would put it right here, right? Instead of a create statement, though, it's going to be an update statement. Okay. So, in addition to create statement, it's going to be update statement. So you'll notice that I'm missing something. I'm missing the retrieve. That's because we're not actually retrieving anything from the database yet. And I won't be retrieving anything from the database until I r drop the JSON value and JSON stuff. Although I guess if we could retrieve and make sure they're the same, that might be a smart thing to do. But we'll, we'll do that later. Update. So creating and executing update statements. And I'm going to copy those. Oh, this is already in the impl, so we don't need to do the impl in front. Okay, and then uh, we'll have to add update statement. Update entity. There. And then I just need to make sure that these are implemented, right? Hey there, Anna Kim Luke. Hi. Hi. How is your house in MC Eternal? Hey, my way. You're just dropping some U Rock? Aw, thank you. I appreciate the U Rocks. Who's crass? Okay. Nice. You did not type that kappa? How did the kappa get in there then? <laughs> Thank you again. Uh, why? Oh, this, um, why is this a dot? It should be an arrow, right? Second dot. Oh, because where I copied it from, we weren't using an iterator. That's why. Now we are using it. Okay, so now it's correct. And here are the declarations. I just need to have definitions. So I chose to add them after the these ones. So let's take these and duplicate. So again, these are helper functions that were are isolating just the creating and executing of these statements, right? So this is an update. And down here, it's an update again. Okay, looks like I need more create. 
update. There we go. Twitch auto enters Kappa for all compliments. <laughs> okay. So again, we um, don't create, we don't construct an update statement if we don't, don't have a database or if the up update statement's already been constructed. But if we have a database and have not constructed an update statement, we're going to find the column specification so that we can get the um, columns and their placeholders. Yeah, exactly the same, right? Instead of an insert into, it's an update, right? And I don't think there's any in, there's any word after that. Although I'm going to just, out of an abundance of caution, look this up. Update. Yeah, it's update table set. Oh, we have to break it up. S column equals expression. Right, and then there's going to be a where. And to E equals something, right? Yeah, so then um, it's all there. So then I don't have two things we're building. Uh, what are we going to call the thing? Column, um, component, column, placeholders? Component columns, I guess. Right, so we're not building two of these. We have to build um, these together, right? So it would be um, column equals question mark. I think, and then um, column type goes there, columns goes there, and then that's it. I think that's right. So it, it would be, um, this is replaced by a bunch of column equals question mark, comma, column equals question mark, etc. That's the table name, and that's a special placeholder for it. So the entity placeholder will be at the end this time. I think I can deal with that. So we need to make sure to put the end, put this at the end. I know how I can do it. The uh, columns entry second has a length, right? So we can just say that dot, uh, so size. That dot size, right? And then this would, s whoop, my VS code froze again. What's the deal? That's the second time today. It's just frozen. It is not responding to input. Oh, there it goes. That was really wacky. I had no idea why it froze up like that. It must be getting cold. Just finished pizza. You're ready to deploy to live now? Awesome. Proceed, N. Perry. Okay, it's, it's locked up again. What do I do about this? And it made me drop frames. Is my computer just having issues? Gonna blame Electron? Just started your pizza? I dropped 88 frames because of that, or maybe this is just a coincidence. Okay, I put this in the wrong place. That size should have gone here, and this starts at zero, right? Yeah. And technically, we sh if we want to put this in order, it's we're binding them all. Actually, I could just use column number here then. I don't need to recompute the size. I think that's it. Let's see if I got it. It's having to build 106 different steps because I'm changing a header file that's included by a lot of CPP files. I should say source files, not CPP files. I changed a header file, which is included by a lot of source files, and so that's causing a lot of things to need to be rebuilt. Chicken and bacon with barbecue sauce base and cheese stuffed crust. Wow, that's an elaborate pizza. Okay, got something wrong here. Oh, the it didn't actually work. It didn't actually do any update. All right, so many things that could be wrong. I guess we will just step through it to see what went wrong.
Let's put a breakpoint right there. And debug. Okay, it never actually called them, so that's a problem. Am I getting to there? Yes. Well, that's interesting. The store is empty? The store is empty. How could the store be empty? Oh, did I um not actually set set up the store entry? Oh, I didn't. Okay, that's my bad. All right. Um yes. So let me think about this. Do, do I I guess I need I do need to create it. I really want the comment setup to do it though. But that will screw up some of the tests if I do that. Actually, you know, it wouldn't be too bad if I um, just copy this create and make that the setup for the update. There, and just make sure that the entity number is the same. And let's have it um, add armor and remove that. This doesn't matter, does it? I just threw that in there to make sure it doesn't actually do anything bad. Yeah. I think this will be okay. So this populates both the database and the component entity, entity component system, and this updates the entry. Yeah, there we go. All passing now. Yay. Okay, so characters is done. So now I just need to repeat this 20 more times. <laughs> Actually, uh, the only difference between character and everything else will be this table I made, right? Right here. So, to implement the other tables, I would just add column specifications for the other tables. Starting to not like VS Code anymore. You have very small files, but a lot of them, every now and then it crashes. Wow. It's only Microsoft software on your Linux machine. Yeah. I hate it when, that's, when you get random crashes. I am a hater of bad technology, of mis malfunctioning technology. I always think, wow, I hate this. Why can't the programmers make bug-free code? <laughs> then I forget that, yeah, that's almost impossible. But still, like, when things just don't work when they should. Dave Mace progression, yeah. And I got one table done. The other table should go a lot more quickly. I'm just, I'm wondering, do I bother having a test fixture for everything else? Or maybe I should just rename this. I'm wondering, do I make a table for everything or not? There are a lot of tables. So the cost of having um, a fixture for every table would be significant. Do I... You know, it wouldn't be too bad. It wouldn't be too bad. Let's see how long it takes me. If I... Let's just take... Let's just take caps, for example. So I will take characters and rename it to caps a copy of it, and then I need to add where there's characters, I need to add caps. Then rerun CMake configuration, then go to caps, and rename characters to caps everywhere. Have to do with persisting entity capability information. Okay, and so the string character becomes caps everywhere. And then uh, is character... Yeah, I think that can just be replaced with caps. Okay, so then the caps of an object... Right now it's just the movement key. So right, just M, two, and that's it. And then here it's just M, and it should be two, right? Hold on, um, 
There's no null here. This is just that. Create and destroy, yes. And then... Um, right, we need to make one. And then modify it. And then make sure when we read it back, M, that we get the new value 3 out of it. That wasn't too bad. I don't, how long did that take? Like maybe a minute or two? Like just do that for every single table and I'll be done. This is actually going a lot faster than I thought it would. I thought for sure this would take longer. Right, it's... Actually, it shouldn't throw an exception. Let's see why. Wait a minute. That's not an exception. It is an exception. What's the exception? Hold on, what? Where? Oh, right here. No, that's not an... What? I can't... I can't find the exception. What's the exception? Structure and exception handling. Oh, because I don't have that clicked. Okay, rerun. Let me see the exception. There it is. Access violation. Prepared statement is empty. Ooh. Oh, because that table doesn't exist. Right, okay. So for every table, I need to add that to the setup. Thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. So I have um, this in here for a reason, right? Do I actually need that? That actually... Let me see if I can get away with not having that. I think that that is a problem. Like, it's just a problem of confusion. Yeah, none of those tests needed. I'm not going to have it. This only needs to set up the schema. So the reason these all fail is because there's no table in the schema right now in the setup. So we're going to have to add that. So let's add caps. And M is an integer and we're done, right? Yeah, exceptions. Um, oh my, I hate exceptions. Okay, it's not that we ran into an exception. We got to syntax error now. Uh, because there's a comma. There we go. Run it again. Okay, two have passed now. What about this one? Interesting. So destroy works and create doesn't. Create caps for entity folder to select it. And it didn't get inserted. Oh, I uh, also need to add the... Um, I need to add the entry here. What am I thinking? I'm not I'm not doing all the things. <laughs> I did the test and I forgot to update these. So that's caps and then it's just M, right? So this has to mirror the schema I set up here. In fact, let me put it in alphabetical order just like the other one. Something's adding a kappa, Mawe. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, cool. So then um the more of these tables I do, the faster it'll be, right? So what table is next? We did caps and we did character container is next. Oh, this one's going to be more challenging. Because this has an items list in it. Ah. What else does a container have in it? A description. So containers has a description. The items list is going to be complicated because that's a secondary table. That's like a many-to-many -many association table. No, it's not. It's not many-to-many. -many. It's going to be a table of three columns. Container entity, container slot, and item entity. Let me let me do a pass on container for a little bit. We'll do the easier ones first. Dialogue is really easy. It's just um, name and script, right? 
Actually, mm, that is more complicated. I'm going to pass on that one too because that's JSON. <laughs> we'll do door next. Even that's complicated because it's got a JSON in it. Yeah, I'm going to do the easy ones first. What's GC? Oh, that's go golem commands. Okay, that's really easy. That's command. Um, P was what? Uh, private? I don't know. What's P mean? Uh, let's skip the build. Build star there. Uh, I need to go to... Interesting. Why is it... Oh, it's a key name. Right. Oh, permission. That's what it is. Okay. I got... An, so that's command, permission, and response. All right. So we can do that next. Uh, this is go GC. Golem commands. Golem commands. I'm going to go to caps and just copy-paste it to golem commands. Rerun CMake. Okay, and then go in here and rename it to golem commands. This has to do with persisting golem, which is um, it's not just Twitch bot, it's like um, social media integration commands. In an SQL database. Actually, thought that you would miss exceptions and you wish to go, but it's not been the case at all. You actually find it's nice that the code reflect the whole flow, because you have to return. So go that go forces you to work without exceptions, because I've been working with that in C plus plus for a while now. Now I just end up building errors into the main flow. So like I'd have to return an error flag in addition to the results and it's not too bad there are a couple places that get kind of sticky and i think it's this kind of thing where if something an error then in addition to the actual output there might be an error as well that's the only only sticky part that i've run into the errors the right way i see <laughs> a little bit opinionated maybe that's okay everyone's entitled to an opinion including languages Okay, so destroy is the same. Create. Okay, so whenever we have it in a string, it should be um, GC. This. Uh, can I do it with the space afterwards? GC. Like that. Okay, that'll work. Because the table's name going to be named GC. Okay, so what do we have in the data in GC? Command CMD P and RSP. So that takes the place of uh, the M field. All right. Exceptions just add computation complexity. Well, but there's a trade-off because, like, for example, I had to um, make the structure more complicated here, and then my code, I had to have conditional logic to check for that at the right places. So some of it just ends up getting moved, right? All right, so then let's have a command. And the format of these is, like, okay, it's a day command, for example. Permission all. And then response is up to no good dark mode. Right. So then um, this would be uh, today. Const care star. And we're doing string equal, I think. 
uh, for first column, second, third. All right, and then all, and then up to no good dark mode for that. All right, and then let's, this is where we change the nature of a command, right? So let's have it um, only good things today. If you throw an exception, there's a lot of hidden flow. Yeah, it's the hit. That could be good or bad. I, th I still think that that's uh, sort of up to. It's a subjective thing, up to up to the opinion of the developer. Like, if I, you know, I I can accept that if you design it right, the hidden flow can be less error prone and uh, more efficient. But if you're more of like a programmer who wants to like handle all the cases yourself and you're pretty good at it, then you can maybe get the performance even better than the, what the compiler could do. You were lied to. Go has things that allow you to do it without that ugly struct, so it's only checking that error re result code. You may, in your language, you have a throw statement, but it's just a syntax sugar. I see. More efficient is debatable, and winding the stack is expensive. Yeah, I guess. I guess it depends on how and where it's used. Yeah. All right, so I need to have um, these down here. And this should go there. If you can hear chatter in the background, it's... um. There is a dispute going on behind me amongst my family. Uh, I forgot to wave to a few people. Hold on. I need to find out where, where I started missing chat. At 11.07. Grayface. Yeah, the Kappa is a Grayface. Hey there, Kashanks. And I should also say hi to Eben Jaeger. Data mi database migration fun? I wouldn't I I wouldn't call it fun. I would call it necessary. And then Kappa debated. Kappa is in their name. And then hey there, really Frank. How are you doing? You're also never in a valid state with exceptions, which increases complexity. Yeah. The dispute is not about programming languages. I believe it is the dispute about um other parental unit and child unit do not agree on what child unit should be doing right now. <laughs> All right. So, like I learned a little bit ago, I need to modify two other places. We need to actually create... We need to modify the schema in the test. So, oh, thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. There needs to be a command, and these are all text, right? Um, P and response. And then the other place was in here. I need to add um, the specification in the code for GC. The same thing, right? It's um, command P and then response. These can, we can have commas at the end here. And that should be it, right? Link it all. All right, and then uh, run them. Okay, two out of four isn't bad. How did I mess this one up? Structured exception. Run it, I guess, and see where the exception happens. Okay, so what did I get wrong in the schema? That means I got a schema thing wrong. E command P response from GC where E is, you know, it's not, nothing wrong with that. Command. Oh, there's no commas. There we go. 
Need the commas. Still. Oh, the in, the type is wrong in my fetches. They say integer, right? These should all be um, string. Uh, text. Yep. And then down here as well. These should all be text. All right. The types are different. Now they pass. You request the name of the table be longer than GC. <laughs> the problem is that uh, the current schema here in JSON, it's GC. I guess I could have a type translation. I know you put a kappa at the end, but I would like to make the name longer. Okay, I'm going to give you a point to this because you gave me an idea. I can have the table name be different from the component type if I have another table. So what if I had one here? Static const unordered map from string to string. Column table names. Or not column table names. Um, component table names. And then um, let's say if there's an entry here, then it gets renamed. So GC would be um, a golem commands. There we go. Wait a minute. You, how come everyone keeps saying that they didn't put a they didn't put a uh, cap at oh you put a lull at the end lull is lull considered a kappa in some contexts okay yeah okay fine you didn't put a kappa on the end you left because you saw an earlier short table names ah yes okay well we're gonna do it we're gonna have the the, the name of the table be longer Killing parent process doesn't kill child. You didn't put a kappa, kappa. <laughs> don't let me, don't make me count kappas to see if it's even or odd now. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's change the test requirement here so that um, we expect it to be uh, golem commands instead of GC in the database in the SQL statements, but not in the um, the component names, because those are pretty much hard coded everywhere. There, right? Did I get them all? One, two, yeah, three. Okay, good. So these will all fail now, right? You don't know the social Twitch emoji schema? Yeah. It took me a while to get used to it, too. Okay, all fail. Right. So then um, the schema is that. Interesting destroy component would work now. Oh, because destroy relies on create, and create failed. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so then um, to make it work, we need to use this translation table. Let me see where the column specifications is used. Okay. Right, so here's where we need to change it, right? So instead of saying component type, let's say table name in all the right places, right? It's in the construction right here and here. Okay. So then um, if since I'm doing it in three places, I think I ought to have a uh, helper function that we only can do once and then call it from three pl different places. So let's have that here. Standard string get table get component table name from const standard string component type 
we're going to do that uh, here. So uh, we need to find it, right? Const auto column, uh, what did I call it? Column table names, component table names. Entry is component table names, find component type. If that is equal to the end of the table, we're just going to return the component type. Oh, thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. Kappa equals question mark. Sentence seems good equals question mark. And PogChamp equals question mark. Are we making um, statements you can bind parameters to now? For destroy, you should not assert it's there at the start of the test. So it should fail. Um, I'm okay with destroy test being invalid if create fails. So this is this is to help simplify the test. I'm basically having one test leverage uh, something else that's something that's tested elsewhere. So this is tested here. So if this test fails, then I just ignore this test result completely because it depends. It's it's the test depends on another test. Rather than having to do extra crap here, right? I, I might as well test this first and once this is tested then I can leverage it to test this so even though it passes I know that that the thing it depends on failed so I don't even I don't even count that that pass that passing if there was a way for me to mark here you know what would be cool is if we could have a markup we can say depends and then have a list of other tests like that Let's say we could do that, have some kind of a markup, then the test runner would just mark it failed because um, it would just not even run it, saying can't run this test because it depends on something, some other test which fails. I'm using Google test. And there's a video I made that it gives an introduction to that. I guess it depends on how much red I want. I don't want so much red. I see too much red. <laughs> okay, so then um, how come this is not... Save that, please. There we go. Um, if it's not in the in, in the table, we just return the input as the output. Otherwise, we're going to return the mapping of it there. So then I can call this from... Um, actually, can I just put it straight in here? I can just say get component name and then put component type. Yeah, why don't I just do that? Instead of... I don't even need to give it a name. Instead of table name, just put the function call there in all three places. And there we go. As long as this passes, that means I can make the table names differ. Oh, I got something different. Wait, what? Unix unresolved external symbol git. What? That, go to definition, that. Oh, I didn't put the namespace in front. Yeah, that would be important. <laughs> Working on added interface to your operators, you found that you didn't parse a caret and percent equals. So if that wasn't enough, the errors continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey there, Mars Raptor. High emote. <laughs> I like that. Is that a generic high emote? <laughs> I'll give you my high emote in response. And I forgot to say hi to Matthew. A Kozlowski, who asked about which test framework I am using. All right. I'm going to have to rescan, aren't I? Because my test disappeared. Okay. Uh, go back to Golan Commands. We'll just find out where that is there. Run them again. Pass. Okay, and the character should pass too, and so should caps. Wonderful. All right. I feel like I should check this code in because we have three different component types now persisted in the database. So let's check it in. Used to have a suite of meta emotes. I like that idea of meta emotes. Okay, those shouldn't exist anymore. That means I forgot to remove them. There we go. They are gone forever. And that one too. 
Yeah, those are the old names for some components that aren't there anymore. Uh, let's add this one separately. Add stream note about JS equals versus triple equals. Commit that. All right. So this is work in progress adding uh, SQLite persistence of various ECS, various parts of the ECS. So persist caps characters there you go <laughs> hold on a second Sorry, <laughs> there's a loud noise and I had to address it. Okay, persist caps, characters, and uh, G. It's not done yet. There, someone's printing out something and it's still the printer's still going. Did you turn off the computer before it was done printing? <laughs> I don't know why, but there's this thing with my family where um, they'll start a print job with their computer and then they'll turn the they'll turn the computer off after they told the printer to print, but before the printer has received the entire document. So <laughs> the printer is like receives half of the document for page two and then they, okay, now they turn their computer on and it printed out the second page. Here it is. I'll put it over here. YouTube search for how to use Google test and my video showed up. Yeah, that's my most popular video so far. Okay, persist caps, characters, and GC components. Okay, what else? Uh, that's it. Push that. Need a bigger buffer in the printer. It goes over Wi-Fi. Sometimes the documents are too big and they just expect that once it starts printing that it's received the whole document. Sometimes though, the printer's only received half the document and it'll start printing the first page and they're like, oh, okay, I can turn the printer off now. You spend an inordinate amount of time trying to display a texture with OpenGL. Turns out the y-axis goes in the opposite direction. I've had that problem where you get the sign wrong and it doesn't show anything because of uh, culling. Just turn off, what is it? Turn off, uh, it's, it's something culling, right, in GC? I forget the word triangle calling or something like that so that if you draw the triangle backwards it normally um, assumes that it's behind that's in, inside and so it doesn't need to draw it and so it will it'll not draw it have the paper fed directly to a door shredder back face calling that's it thank you atomic nibble you got it all right um continue looking at tables i guess i want to get the easy tables done And that's not an easy table because it has an internal um, JSON object. How about input? Do we even need to persist that? I'm going to say we don't need to persist input components. There's no reason to persist them, actually. Well, actually, there is an extreme case where we might want to persist it. If someone starts holding down a movement key and they hold it down for several minutes, in the meantime, we start up a server. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> so we'll do this, this one. We, we, we can do this. No problem. Uh, in fact, this one is going to have an, uh, its own table name. Uh, input. So copy that and call it input. Input. Have to do with persisting... Player input state in an SQL database. So go to the CMake, add input.cpp, tell CMake to regenerate the build system. It's done. Now we can add stuff. So instead of GC, it's going to be in. 
right and it's going to be input okay and then um the fields the columns are cd move off move on move on let's pretend that they are um holding down the movement key so and the cooldown is a number one two three dot four five six test the extreme case in production the serial for the rasterization of textures the origin is bottom left not top left why do they switch it up oh i think it has to do with the historical origin of uh texture that uh it was uh like its coordinate system it the origin of its coordinate system is different from that of um the uh, vertex shader so that the the um fragment shader and texture shaders coordinate systems are fundamentally different right um there's a mapping and you can in the um in your in your translation between coordinate systems you can handle it in the mapping which is what i've tried to do but yeah um they have different histories, so it's not surprising that they're they're not consistent. Hey there, Rally Monkey. What I'm working on at the moment, I got some tables into the database. I'm just adding more. So I have um, golem commands, cap uh, movement capability, and um, characters, and I'm adding um, input state. So this is CD move off, m move on. Oh, actually, why don't I just why don't I just search replace that? CD move off move on. Okay, and then um, it's real number boolean boolean. Boolean. Okay, and so that's um real numbers double and booleans are bools in C++ and n we're not doing string equal here I can do equal not near because we're not doing arithmetic right so it should uh, be precisely equal and um, this is false and that's true and I can use the shortcut here expect false and expect i had it wrong didn't i that one's false this one's true see don't think you had to troubleshoot for far too long i think everybody who gets used to 3d graphics has to troubleshoot that mars raptor it's part of the initiation process okay that's create here is set so set will have it um Start with the same, and then here, uh, let's just set that to false, and set this to like 101, let's just set it to a different number. And then I will copy these three lines down to here, and put in the correct numbers here, and that's false. Okay, tests are set up. They should fail, let's verify that they fail. Another printout. Okay, input, run. They fail. So the two things I need to do, I need to add the schema. Here's the schema, input. It was um, CD as real, and then um, these are Boolean, and um, this one was move off and move on, right? Okay, and then the other place I need to add something is in the column specifications. I need to add um, in, and it's um, cd move off move on. And then we need to have a table, a component type to table mapping. So in becomes input. There we go. You want your preferred left hand Y up coordinate system? 
You can do a, a translation. I would just do a translation step in the fragment shader to reverse the coordinates. The reverse the sign uh, uh, sw swap invert invert the uh, y coordinate. You're always annoyed with Z up or right-handed coordinates. You know what, Jelmega? What I got the most tripped up on is the coordinate system differences between Blender and OpenGL. Hey there, smack in the box. Um, that was really fun <laughs> in that I got I got really frustrated with it. Like that, there were several different places where the coordinate system was. Uh, where there are different coordinate systems in Blender and OpenGL, and they were all inconsistent with each other. <laughs> and I, I, once I figured it out, I'm like, this is just dumb. Why is it Z up for this one and Y down for the other one? And like, then I thought, you know, it is all it, does, it is all arbitrary when you think about it. Like some for some coordinate systems, Z is up. Other times, Z is is front back. X is usually usually left and right though. We can rely on X. <laughs> it's Y and Z that tend to get swapped, right? Or am I wrong on that? Okay, input is passing. Next. Interact, I guess. Oh, no, that one's got an arrays in it. I'm going to avoid that one for now. Item? Item we can do, right? Oh, I wanted to look up in the key names what items have. What's IMM then? What is this IMM? What's IMM? Why do I have two components with IMM? Is that obsolete? That might be an obsolete attribute. Because I don't see it referenced anywhere else. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to declare it obsolete. So then the only things we really should care about are here, right? Despawn, time, max quantity. Yes, we can do this one next because they're all um, easy to store in a table. So we're going to do that next. So input now is item. Input item. Remake the build system. Rename. Input to item. I'm going to change uh, in to item. Okay. Okay, so we have um, DT. Uh, MQ. Q. N. I wonder if I should have column name changes too. I should probably support column name changes too, right, Toulouse? <laughs> the only reason I made them short here was to save space in the JSON, but the in the SQLite, it shouldn't matter the length of these column names. And actually, would may, the only time really the column names are important would be when a human is reading them. So maybe I should be going back to long, longer names for columns. The most fun thing is OpenGL normalized Z coordinates are negative one to one. Other things is zero to one. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that. Yeah, and being off by one half in in some coordinate systems. In some some axes, yeah. Thank you for the follow. You've had systems where X was left, Y was up, and Z minus is forward. Is that right-hand rule? No, that's that that's negative Z forward. So that would be a right-hand rule, not left-hand rule. No, the other way. That's left-hand. That's a left-handed coordinate system. X left, right? Uh, let me think about it. Yes. Do you know the right hand rule, left hand rule? You hold your, your hand like this, and then um, the fingers become the, the positive directions. So um, the difference between left hand and right hand obviously is one of the axes is flipped in sign from the other. So x left, y up, z, minus z forward, you can only do with your left hand, I think. x left, y up, negative. No, it's right handed rule. 
No, negative Z forward, so that would be left hand, yeah. Yeah, I get confused all the time. That's why I have to memorize the left hand, right hand rule, and then I end up staring at my hands all day when I'm trying to figure out OpenGL coordinate systems. And hey there, Rar Roju. 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 Hi. Okay. Let me put this table in, and then I'll go back and I'll change it so that the, the column names can be more descriptive. Right now, I'll start with um, the way they are. D, T, M, Q, N, Q, note, T. Why did I do that when I should have done search replace? There. All right. So there's a despawn time. Max quantity, like a thousand. Name, gold, type, money. Quantity, one, two, three, note. It's shiny. And we have another printout. Yeah, well... That, that, that make, that's what makes 3D graphics fun, Jalmega. If they didn't have all those quirks, then you wouldn't have fun-looking bugs when you try to render things and you have um, a coordinate backwards or scaled wrong. Okay, so that's a real. Uh, the next one would be um, the, these, a mixture between integers and um, strings, right? 1,000. And that's an integer. Okay, and the next one would be a string. So let's do string equal gold const care star. And then that's as a text. And that's column two. All right, and then um, two more, or, and then a third. Okay, so then this was 123. It's shiny and money. Th column three, four, and five. Integer text text. Okay, I think I got it. So I'm going to copy those lines down to the update ones. And um, so we'll set up this. So we'll remove the despawn timer. I forgot to silence my phone. Remove the despawn timer, we'll remove the note, and we'll change the quantity to 50 or something like that. All right. So then, um, if it's null, then it turns into database abstractions value type null. For that, dot get type. All right, and then um, the other thing that's nullish was the note. So that's column, f that's as a text, column four. All right, and then um, I changed the quantity of 50, and that's the only th other thing that changed, right? We nulled out two columns. These two didn't change, this one did, and that didn't change. Okay, good. Thank you for the follow, by the way. I think Jelmega's intent is to melt Mars Raptor's brain. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jiren the Gray. How are you doing today? You can watch a season pro, pro um, not write good, clean code. I have a tendency to get kind of caught up in um, understanding my own code and then writing code that is not easy for other people to understand. So I'm trying to get better at that by uh, making helpers. I'm starting to think maybe these should there should be helpers for these. Because this is complicated, right? The fact that I'm calling fetch column when there's a number in there and there's a type kind of feels like I actually kind of feels like I should have helpers for these, shouldn't doesn't doesn't it? Because it's complicated. But there's always the order of operations to consider. First, make it work then make it right, and then after that, make it fast. So you can think of, I'm making it work right now, but I'm not making it readable yet. That's part of refactoring, which is step two. 
Okay, so this will all fail, right? Okay, so then um, to make it pass, the changes to the game needed are I need to define the schema. So that's item. All right, and then let me get this. Let me just cheat and I'll copy this over to here. And I'll just do multi cursor the, uh, down the row here, indent, make, get rid of that. And then put, um, most of these are going to be texts, right? Only this one is not, it is a real. This is an integer. This is also an integer. Okay, and then the rest of the strings can go bye-bye. Bye-bye. And then, um, oh, I need commas in there. I messed up last time. I forgot the commas. Commas in there, and I, uh, oh, and not outside. And then I drop these ones, and I'm done, right? So DT, yeah, okay. I'll fix the col the column names in a minute. But for now, it's going to be as is, going from JSON to the database. So it's DT. It's MQ. It's N. It's Q, note, and T. All right, let's see if it, I got it to pass that way. You have the opinion it should always look nice? Yeah, but it's hard for me to do that. It's hard to um, to make it readable and work at the same time. It means doing two steps at once, which for me is very difficult. If you can, then uh, good good for you. I'm not that great though. I'm slower. Okay, the fact that it took you three tries means I should add some aliases, right? Alias com test exp Explorer to um, extensions, alias com plugins to extensions. There, fixed it. Test, okay, alias com test extensions. I don't think test was alias to anything. Now it is. Plugin plugins, okay, alias com plugin extensions also the original question was what what is the test extension for vs code use g test to work i've been running tests oh cool yes yeah, so um i made a video on how to set this up um it is a combination for me of three things so um I write my tests in gtest, which you already do, right? So, sure, we have a test fixture here with some tests in it. So the other two elements are extensions to Visual Studio Code. So to get this panel where you can see all your tests and control them, and also to get these um, headers for every test, that extension is Test Explorer UI. So... Um, that one's it here, Test Explorer UI by Holger Benel. That alone will not, if you install that alone and try to run it with your tests, you will not see anything here. That's because Test Explorer UI doesn't understand Google Test. There's a second plugin that you need to connect these two. And that was recently renamed to be C++ Testmate. It used to be called Catch2 Google Test and Doc Test Explorer. It's got a catchy new name, C++ Testmate. It locates Google test runners in your project's build folder and then runs them internally to detect what tests you have and then uses that to populate the Test Explorer UI. So the other thing I cover in that video, by the way, is um, I, in, in setting this up, you need to obviously have a build system to build your code, and so I use CMake for that. If you also use CMake, then the plugin for you is CMake Tools. You want to change the extensions command to use the new extension name? Oh, yeah, probably. So uh, let's edit that uh, right here. In-game extensions. C++ Testmate. Update. Thank you, Nui.
Hey there, pink fluffy llama. Pug, puggy wuggies, what would you like that command to do? <laughs> oh, pluggy wuggies. Oh, you want me to alias that to extensions? <laughs> Why not? Alias com pluggy wuggies to extensions. You see McTool's already work on Linux, so hopefully everything is fine there as well. Yeah. That's why I use CMake tools and also why I use um, VS Code is to um, have the same environment work on Linux and Mac as well. Yeah, just for you, pink, pink fluffy llama. Okay, so run the test again and it passes. Whoa, looks like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> use some other test extension, but it broke in some update. Yeah, um, this test mate. I like it for two reasons. One, it works well for me. And number two, the developer actually got back to me when there was an issue. And um, they um, added a whole bunch of stuff in response to um, the input that I gave. The fact that I was showing myself using it on Windows, they were like, oh, I see that some things didn't work the way I expected because you're running on Windows. Here, let me fix that. And I didn't even ask for it. So they are really nice about it. So... Uh, so far, great developer, and um, the tool works for me. So, and the one time it didn't work for me, it, he fixed it. You know, they fixed it right away after I reported it. Is it possible showing the lifetime of the auto token is leaking some data? It shouldn't. It's not when I created it; it's when it got refreshed. And the uh, refresh time is uh, randomized by Twitch. So I don't think that that's a leak. But you guys tell, correct me if I'm wrong. The game now automatically refreshes the token that it uses for the chatbot. So the most you'll see is the moment at which it refreshes and then the refresh time. I don't think that that actually tells you much because it should be just random. And what extensions do you use? Oh, come on. Don't jump again. Now we're, now we're pushing it. <laughs> well, yeah, thanks for asking, A squared. Maybe if someone can tell me that it is a leak, then then that would be good to know. I don't. I think we're good though. All right. So I'm going to go back to work here. I am moving a lot of this. I'm trying to move a lot of this stuff into a database. So we did item, and I'm I'm basically picking the easy ones. That's not easy because it has an array in it. How about NPC? No, because it's got arrays and objects. That's a really complicated one. How about NPC class? Nope. Player. Nope. It's got items and stuff. Position. I think we could do position because it's just um, coordinates. Depth and a gone flag, right? Test a real command and not an alias. Oh, what, what did you want for the real command? Hold on, let me look at your chat. Since test can be much, maybe make test a command. Okay, yeah, I like that idea. I will put yours in directly. So, um, let's do it here. Remove the test and then add um, test there. Uh, all add. Okay. Did that add it? Let's try it again. Test. Yeah, thank you very much, Nui. By the way, you see what happened there? I missed Nui's chat. And um, some, that'll happen from time to time. If you type something, a question to me, and I, I seem to ignore you, it's, it's not that I'm ignoring you most often. It's because I just didn't see it. And if you just restate it or tag me and say, what about what I just asked, then I'll get back to you. Yeah, you like the W command? <laughs> That is um, courtesy of, uh, what's his name? Antimatter Tape made that one. <laughs> I know, Nui's got a lot of points. But, oh yeah, I think Nui might, Nui might have passed you. Let's see. Nope. Approaching. Nui scored uh, a bunch of points because Nui found a uh, security um, flaw in the game. 
and whispered me off stream and let me fix it. So I gave Nui like 50 points for that because it was a critical flaw. There was actually a way you could crash the game server just by crafting a special, a special uh, JSON message to the server. And it was very, very important that I fix that. So the points are being hidden by chat. Oh, sorry. Uh, how do I show that? I guess I'll just scroll out here. There you go. Yeah, if you, you'll you get a lot of points from me if you find and let me know about um, a security issue. Especially if you let me know so that I can fix it before someone exploits it. Just like any big company or any company in general should do, I think. if um, Not that there are bug bounties. It's more like I show extra appreciation if you find and let me know about a security issue and let me fix it. <laughs> Okay, positions next, I guess. Um, you get paid in Rhymo points. I have to be kind of careful about that. Um, I don't want people doing denial of service or attacking my servers, right? But if you happen to notice something that could be exploited, I would want to know about it. Appreciation? Well, I, there's nothing, not much else I can offer right now. Later when I actually have something that's worth more than appreciation, then you'll get some of that. Yeah. Only white hat, please. <laughs> and before you, so you start pen testing my stuff, please let me know and get my approval. That's what Nui did. Nui asked me if it was okay to test something, and I said, yes, for you it's okay. And then Nui let me know what the what the exploit was, and then I fixed it, and then I gave Nui 50 points. If you were to go and pen test and attack my server now without asking me for my uh, approval, I might not be so happy about it when you let me know that there's uh, an exploit. I would say, hey, I would have appreciated if you told me that you were going to do that and get my go-ahead first. See, you, you might not get any points <laughs> unless you make sure that you're, you let me know you're about to test it. Yeah, and to, and tell and let me know in private, not not make it public. That's important. Oh, did I say don't test? Well, but do you um you could have tested it. I I trust you enough to have tested it. But that one I didn't need you to test it because I saw right away that it was a problem. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> in fact, I'm not even going to say what it was. You can find the exploit, ask you about it, and then give you the exploit to you. Well, no, um, I'm saying if you want to do testing, like pen testing, get my go ahead first. If you if you just find an exploit just by just out of like, I think what Nui did was they were testing different things in my code from GitHub. You can so various elements of my code you can find in GitHub, right? So one of them was the, the JSON parser, and Nui found that the JSON parser uh, fails on certain input, and then um, asked the question, could this be a problem on the game server? And I thought, yes, that, that would actually be a very bad problem on the game server. So um, no testing was needed other than to do unit testing. So um, that's actually probably preferred. If it's something like where you can't test it in the unit test environment, like let's say fuzzy testing, let's say you want to do a fuzz test of some sort on the server. Uh, but yeah, please ask me first. We can arrange to have it done when like I'm not streaming so it won't cause a disruption because the game runs my chat bot. If you were to like do stuff, attack my server right now, um, I would be probably not happy about it because you probably disrupt my chat bot. That's why TDD is great. Yeah, if I get it right. Yeah. So in this case, the TDD worked because all I needed to do was add uh, Nui's test vector to my test, and I saw it crash right away. I'm like, oh, let's go fix that. <laughs> all right. So I hope I made it clear what the rules and my expectations are. I have to be very careful about that. Position was next, right? Position. I think here we're going to also make it not abbreviated. Position. Okay, so we'll make file. Okay, position goes next to position index. Interesting. 
make the build system. How am I doing on time? Is three hours? Probably could good could use a short break in a little bit. Let's see, break. Oh, break. Wait a minute, don't is it not break? What is it? Stretch, right? Alias com break stretch. Break. There we go. I'll I'll remind myself. Your version of TDD is trying something with your compiler and then fixing it? Yeah, that is okay. The benefit of TDD is that if you can codify it, you can have it run with automation. So you're doing a non-automated approach of test-driven development. It, it's, it's a start. But if you can automate it, it's even better, I think. Pause. Are we, are we, is this National Make Command Aliases Day? I don't mind. Pause for stretch. That's fine. All right. Um, position is pause. Hold on. So when it's a full string like this, it should be pause. Yes. Okay. And then the things we have in position are what? X, Y, Z, depth, and gone. X, Y, Z, depth, and gone. I think that's it. And these are all integers except for gone, which should be false. So X, 42, Y, 17, Z, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, depth, 20. Sure. That's a realistic looking one. Okay, so this should be X, Y, Z, depth, gone. Pluggy wuggies, that's right. <laughs> so expect 42, expect 17. Uh, hold on. Let's use this one, just copy it a couple times. And then the last one is an expect false if we cast to bool. All right, and so that's columns 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this one's boolean. All right, and you can't see that because it's too wide. Now you can see it. 42, 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 20. All right, and then um, destroy is fine. So then update, let, we will have a component which has a position, and then we're going to change it. Let's flip the gone bit, and we'll move it slightly off the y-axis, and just, we don't have to change everything. So that just changes the um, expectations here to be uh, true, and 18. Done. All right. You know, I'm also thinking the uh, update is updating all of the columns, right? I wonder how in how. I wonder if it's pretty inefficient. Ah. Uh, I should be worrying about... I should not worry about performance yet, right? Worry about that later. Just get it functional. So then I need to add uh, pause here. Or position... You know, pause. But then there has to be a position thing down below. So X, Y, Z. Depth and gone. And I never said... Went back and done, did what I said I would do. Which is make the column names flexible. I'll do that after position. I'll take. I'll do this one. Take a break, and then when I come back, I will do um, column name flexibility. That's what I'll do. So I need to add the schema in the setup here. Really feeling a slowdown from C++ STL and debug. Yeah, it's really slow when they do bounds checking and stuff like that, right? Okay, so that's a lot of these are going to be integer with one bool. So let's just take the integer and. Replicate it four times and make the last one a boolean. G, and this one's depth, Z, Y, X. Mm. 
building it. Prepare to run test. Run test. Passes. Nice. So let me take a break. When I come back, I want to make it so that these column names can be more descriptive. Like, this should be name, not n. And this should be max quantity, not mq. So let me actually, before I go on a break, let me check this in. So we're adding input item position. So this is work in progress, persisting ECS data to database. Add input table, add item table, add um, position table. Commit. All right. Let me uh, let me take a, like a three minute break. I will be right back. I am back a little bit early, and my stream helper says I forgot to say hi to someone who had an interesting name. Holy nesting, Batman. Yes, that's right. Holy, hard to say name. Ruri, Ruri, Rui. Thank you, Nui. Okay. I'm going to make the column names more flexible now. So, which table could really benefit from that? Probably item. That's the most egregiously shortened names. So let's change the um I like E. I'll keep the E, but we'll call this despawn time max quantity uh name quantity quantity and type. All right. Is that Rubik's cube notation? I never, uh, I never, I never knew that. Oh, is that like red? What's U stand for then? Oh no, right under underside, right inverse underside un inverse. I get it. Did you miss your message about outdated notes? Probably. Let's see what you said.
uh, the notes one. Did I not hit that one? Which one did I actually modify? Oh, the notes for extensions. I updated the um, the one for extensions. Is that what you meant? I, I got that one. So if we do extensions again, it should say um, C++ testmate. Oh, no. Uh, where does that actually link to? That links to VS Code extensions, which is where? Well, let me look at that. Let me expand that out. References here. Yes. Okay. No, I didn't update that. Let's update that one. Thank you, Nui. This one is um, C++ testmate. Does that still go to the same marketplace entry, or does the URL get updated? Uh, how do I get an updated link? I guess if I uh, go to extensions here and then there should be a, a link here somewhere, right? Oh, there it is. Oh, it still has the same old name. Okay. Well, the link didn't change, but the text that goes with the link can be updated. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so the link didn't change, but that name that... Okay, good. Updated. Thank you. Bloop. It's a Rubik's Cube sexy move, is it? Right underside, right inverse, underside, inverse. Right... Huh, okay. I know how to solve a Rubik's Cube using two algorithms. Like two things I had to memorize. It's not the most optimal, but it's the, the, the two that my dad figured out when he was studying the Rubik's Cube years ago. It's one algorithm to swap two corners and then randomizes all the edges, and then the other one to swap two pairs of edges. So you do the corners first and then the edges second. And I still remember how to do it. Okay, so table columns can have fancy names now. So to update the expectation for that, I'm going to go to item here. And all of these DTs become... Um, is it dangerous? So DT is such a sm small name. I'll do it manually. D spawn time. Despawn time. Okay, and then the next is uh, max quantity. And then the next one is uh, name. Name. Oh, I forgot this one right here, max quantity. Okay, and then instead of Q, it's quantity. Quantity, quantity, and quantity. Note stays the same. T is type. Type. Type, type, and type. Okay. Tests have been updated. So the tests are going to fail now. All right, now to update the code. So we're going to have another table, I think. Or should it be... Um, should I put it in here somewhere? Mm, I don't know. I don't... Yeah, I think it's going to be a different one. So this would be component uh, column names, I guess. And it's a two-leveled map. I think I want unordered map from string to string. Ugly. Okay. So right now it's just item. And then it will have a map where we are changing um, 
DT to despawn time. Actually, you know what I could do? Um, I could use key names here, can't I? Yeah, this one. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's what I should do. Where's key item? Here it is. So these, I should be using these keys here. Max quantity. You found your old script used to bot the game in the very early days. You polished it, otherwise inactive subreddit. Yeah, I'm not a big redditor, so I have that subreddit. It was mostly, I established it because Playing With Scissors said I should establish it, otherwise someone else would. Yeah, it is inactive. I didn't expect it to be active, at least until I actually have a game that has its own life. Right now, my game doesn't have its own independent life. The game, people only play the game as long as, um, no one will stay the same. It, well... We can fill this in fully. The game only has life right now while the stream is active. And I actually am uh, showing it on stream and stuff like that. So I don't expect the subreddit to have life until the game has life, which means people are playing the game when I'm not even streaming. Uh, type. Okay. So then I need to use the same names up here then, uh, right? Yeah, these are order dependent. Max quantity, name quantity, note type. Actually, I can um, I can put these in any order I want. Do I care about what order they're in? I don't think I do. Thank you for the gifted sub to the Jalmega, good day. That was very, very sweet of you. Now the Jelmega is an is a sub and a VIP at the same time. Okay. Now that I've established this table, I need to use it. So um it's in this column specifications where we actually need to use it, right? Yes. Actually no. Hold on. No, I don't need it here. It's not in the construct, it's in the execute. It's when we're going through here, right? Oh, wait. I need to reverse the map because it's database to JSON. It's JSON to database that needs it, or it's where I use JSON to database. I only use it one place, right? No, I use it in two places. Okay. Fine. Hold on, let me make the uh, function we need. Get component column name. And we'll need two things, right? The table name and the, the component name and the uh, column name. So const standard string uh, field name or something. Yeah, okay, and then let's define this. There. Do that part that I forgot last time. Okay, so const auto. What's the name of the thing again? It's really off the screen here. Component column names. Entry is component column names find component name. Component type. If that entry is that table end, just return the field name. Otherwise, we have to find that if the field is in there. So const auto field entry is equal to this second dot find field name. If field entry is that dot end, return field name. Otherwise, we're going to return field entry second. There we go. Your friend wanted to dig an underground tunnel. You told him, go for it. <laughs> Good one, Mr. Bowerick. Thank you for that. 
your initial reaction was, wait, what? I uh, know. Uh, we really never had gifted subs on this channel before Gadam. Gadam is like the number one gift sub and, and pretty much the only gift sub. We have had a, f had a few people other than Gadam gift subs, but not very many. Gadam is very generous. All right, so I need to use this down where we use um execute create statement yes so right so um wait yeah okay uh, it needs to be in reverse actually hold on that means I, I want this to be named something i should be doing get component field name from column name that's what i should be doing Field name. Oops, wrong one. Field name from column name. So this should be um, component field names. And uh, this should be not field entry, but column entry uh, for column name. Okay, so then I basically I need to reverse the map around. So instead of it being um, a map from uh, field name to column name, it's from column name to field name. So I need to swap these around. So uh, let me do this. Multi-cursor here. Remove the commas. Go one word over. Will this actually work? Oh, that did. It's really smart about the clipboard then. Because I did a cut and then a paste and it got them correctly. Neato. All right. Okay, so now I have this function. I need to actually use it. So that would be in um, execute. Yes. Right into here. We need to. Um, not use column, but use uh, get component field name uh, type column, right? Component type column. Like that. Okay, so I'm going to grab that. And where we use JSON to DB, just use it to basically do it again. There. Done. Oh, my bot must have uh, switched hands. That means the server probably died. Yep, so uh, server 2 crashed, I guess. That NA means it didn't have to vote for the leader, which means it probably crashed. One became the leader, and then two was restarted. So something caused server 2 to crash. We have a, a bug still in the server. It cra they crash, crash occasionally. Whenever the leader crashes and a new leader gets elected, the bot will um, come back from a different uh, server. Does the aliases still work? They should still work. Because, like, you know, what you expect with Raft is whenever I make a change, it gets replicated immediately across all three servers, so... The bot pulls from the game state, which is replicated. So what I could do is I could have the bot not announce itself whenever it starts, and then you won't even know that the server switched hands. Was implementing Raft hard? Yeah, it was pretty hard. It would. It took me several weeks, and then I had a lot of bugs, and I had to go. I had. I still need to go through and do a third pass on it, but I've done at least two passes over the code to re to refactor it and to fix bugs. And hello, by the way, the name. I also forgot to say hi to our jokester, Mr. Balrock. Hello. Yeah, I'm, and I'm still not done with Raft. I'm pretty sure there are still some bugs in there. Especially around when we're changing the, the cluster configuration, the shape of the cluster. It doesn't always work right. And I have to take the whole cluster down and then basically reset its state. Somehow, 
test was already aliased? No, it wasn't aliased. Yeah, it wasn't. Wait, what are you asking now? I don't think it was aliased before. I think, yeah, I don't think it was. It, unless I deleted it. You might be thinking of in the test framework. Uh, I have that running, right? There might be a test command there. Yeah, let me look. So that would be, uh, we can close this and go to the uh, local host. You might be thinking of a test command here, this one, right? I don't think I ever had a test command in production, though. You said that you missed the ref implementation? Oh, well, it's archived on YouTube if you really wanted to go back and watch them. I can find the approximate date. I know it was January, February last year. So it would be around here that I did it. Uh, before then? Hold on, when did I actually start Raft? Was it here? This implies that I already had Raft. Finish up Raft logs. It might have been around here, like December. Hmm. No, no. Okay, it was before that. Beginning of December, Raft consensus algorithm. Start work on achieving server coherence. Yeah, so yeah, it it took it took a long time. So you could go back to the YouTube um, video seventy six, I guess. I don't even remember if I had a a, a, a webcam at that time. So seventy six through like yeah, you can see it took me a while to get it right. Probably all the way through here, through one oh seven. <laughs> You want to make your own faster version? Cool. It's a really big challenge, though. I found Raft to be pretty hard to implement correctly. Yeah, there's a lot of video hours in there. Like, I don't expect people to walk to to watch to rewatch through all that stuff, but maybe you could fast forward through and find the interesting parts. I don't know. Okay. Let's test this again. Okay, it broke. Did oh, did I update the um shape here? I did. So then um what am I doing wrong? Oh, this is wrong. What am I doing? That should use the keys. So I ought to just pull straight from this table these keys, right? Despawn time, max quantity, name, quantity. And I already can see that I didn't include the key names, so I'll fix that in a moment. Include realm server key names. Okay, and I should probably fix the other test too. Yep, the set one. And then here I decided to remove despawn time and uh, something else, right? The note. And I changed the quantity to 50. Yes. All right. Hopefully that's what it, what, it, what, that's what the problem was. Yay. Okay, cool. So now I have flexible naming. So I can go back and maybe name some of the other table stuff. I mean, I don't I don't care that much. I could just do it later. I No, no, I should I should do this from the start, shouldn't I? I should have it clean from the start. Otherwise, it's just going to be more work later to do a database migration. So for um, caps, we'll have um, movement be key caps mobility. Oh, it's mobility. There we go. It wasn't movement. It was mobility all along. 
So then um, common, it has to say mobility instead of M. And then um, the test needs to be updated. So that's caps here. So that's mobility. This should have always been doing key caps mobility. And we should always from the start have been using realm server key names. Okay, and then um, key caps mobility for these M's. And then mobility instead of M down here. Hey there, Marka Shiva. What database will I be using? And hello, uh, Ellie Noel. I'm using SQLite to start with. Just because it was easy to embed in my uh, game's um, servers. So the game runs on a cluster of servers. So each server has a copy of the game. So SQLite made it, it was very convenient because SQLite is geared towards embedding in a program and having the database be um, mostly used exclusively by one program. And that's exactly what I'm going to be using it for. So it was very um, simple and met my requirements pretty closely. And um, But I did end up making a database abstraction layer. So for example, to um, in SQLite to execute a statement, you do SQLite 3 exec. So I made a wrap around it called execute statement. And um, so theoretically, if I change to something else, which also supports SQL, um, I would just replace the contents of this implementation with something else, but the interface would stay the same, and the interface is what, what the game uses. So, um, people want me to try things like MongoDB and uh, PostgreSQL, uh, maybe. It's, uh, it, would be, it would be a fair thing to go compare them, for pros and cons at least, but I should be able to, I just, it would just be more work. I, I want to get at least something off the ground, so that's going to be more and more convinced that SQLite's the way to go because it's it's fitting in pretty well. All right, so I updated caps, right? Build it, run caps again. I feel like people are only asking that because they're those are the new hot things. What's the new hot thing? Oh, uh, MongoDB, maybe. Does the DB specifically for games? Okay, I broke it. I broke it. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I didn't change the... Uh, no, I did change this. And what's different? Oh, I didn't change this. Yes, that has to match. If you switch it to a persistent RDM, RDBMS, prepared statements in the app will always be slower than wrapping the prepared statement in a stored procedure on the database site, which can kill if you're writing MMO. It's being called hundreds of thousands of times a second. Okay. Well, we'll find out, you know. It could be that uh, I um, do it in another thread offline because really the only reason right now the game is storing stuff in the database is to create snapshots of game state so that if the server starts, it doesn't need to ask another server for a copy of all the data. Also, if all of the servers were to go down and they come up, they have to start from something. So, um, But during the execution of, of the game, there's also an in-memory copy of everything independent of the database. So if if it was slow to update the database, I could just offload that to a worker thread and I could do it in bursts. I could, um, it could just not store every single change. It could just store the current snapshot, kind of like what I do already with the snapshotting system. Right now it doesn't actually store to disk um, a complete snapshot of the game every time the game changes. It only does a journal journal entries, right? And when the journal gets too long, then it collapses it into a snapshot. So I could do the same thing with the database. I could have it be the, the journal is um, the same journal that we use um, for Raft, and then um, the snapshot is just a database that gets you know updated whenever we decide to make a new snapshot. Cache the execution, uh, I see. Well, we'll find out. 
I don't know yet if it's significant or not. All I know is that the JSON is extremely slow to read and write. MongoDB and PostgreSQL kind of gets annoying after a while, but they, the way you handle it is, it is wondering. You don't think you call this new? Okay, well, it could be that they're popular now. It's for the Hexy language. Not sure about C++, but there it is. Okay. Thank you, Jailmaker. Let me add it to the list. Uh, we're going to add this to um, the to-do list. I have a list of databases to consider. Let's put it at the end. Castle. You have a point? Wait a minute. What happened to your points? You must have gotten points before. Let's give you another point. I thought you had more than... I thought you had points before. Am, am I just not remembering right? Hold on. The Gel Mega. They have a record for you having points in here. Maybe not. We missed you every time that... Um, oh, no. Wait a minute. You had points. What happened to your points? Oh, yeah, maybe. Um, let me check something offline here. Actually, I don't have to do that. I can just do it online here. Let me check something. Offline gel make... Yeah, you should have 17 points. But you unlinked your character. So your character is holding all 17 of your points right now. Did, how did your character get unlinked from Twitch? Or does it... Is there... Do I have another... This is another instance where the database... Um, where the, um, the, the... The account linking feature is broken. That I do have to go into the back end to look at. I need to look at entity... Four four one six two. Actually, I can do it here. Four one six two. Fetch. Do you have points embedded here? You have two points embedded in there. Wait a minute. Okay, so there's a problem here. The account is li not linked correctly. I think. Okay, hold on. So I'll need to add this to my list to fix. Unless I... Did I fix this before and um, it got broken again? Hold on. I think your account is just another one that got messed up at some point. Okay. You bought an Airbnb for horses. You hope it brings you a stable income. <laughs> okay. If Jackima says you deserve a point, you deserve a point. Okay, hold on. Um, I need to fix your points. I want to do... I'm peeking into the game's back end right now to see what happened with your account. Yeah, it's not linked, but somehow you have points. Wait a minute. Does that mean there are two entities? That can't be right. Oh, I might have to force a snapshot to be made right now. Uh, force a snapshot, please. And then wait a little bit, and then I'll look at it again. Okay, now where did those points go then? I see your character is 4172.
that it shouldn't be oh wait a minute wait a minute well hold on hold on hold on i think it's this one that's con that's confused with those are the old link fields yes okay that's the problem the old link fields aren't weren't migrated correctly so really It shouldn't be, sh it's storing them here when it really shouldn't be. Okay, so then um, I need to fix this offline. So let me put that in uh, a note for today. Today. I need to merge, basically I need to update manually your Twitch link. So, um, post stream, uh, repair the um, player Twitch linkage for the gel mega, which is entity uh, 4162. Okay, so you really have um, 17 plus 2 now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Should I give you another point? So now you have 3 plus 17. Yeah, you have 17 plus 3. <laughs> All right, I'll fix it. I'll fix it later. I don't want to do it on stream be because um, you won't be able to see me do it because I have to. Um, what do I actually have to do there? What was the way I did it before? I think I had to take the whole game offline to repair it. I should have. I must have made some migration code, and then there must be a bug in the migration code. Yeah. It should have copied the points over like the moment that the game started and it should have translated the link over. So I don't know what's going on. I'll, have to, I'll look into it later. I don't want to look into it now. We'll fix it later. Yeah, so I got caps. So now we're going to update this constitution. Dexterity, hit points. Max hit points. Ah, uh, this is going to be a lot of these, so let's put them all in different lines. Strength. No need to abbreviate these because they get compiled in the prepared statements anyway, right? So... Another map. Character. I'm going to grab all of these and paste them here. And then all of these have a brace and then some word there. I don't remember if I made uh, key names entries for that, though. And I don't have key names pinned. Oh, I do. Look at that. We have armor. Rasubaka, 11 months, almost a year. You and Toulouse also, almost a year. Thank you for the resub. I appreciate that. Hope, hope, hope you've been enjoying yourself the last 11 months. And that my stream has contributed some amount in the enjoyment. Yep, I, haven't, I have shortcuts for all of these, looks like. I even have strength. Cool. I've updated it there, and I need to update it in the schema here. Dexterity, hit points, max hit points, intelligence, strength. And then um, the test has to be updated. Character. Characters? Okay, and then all of these need to use the key names. Constitution, dexterity, hit points, maximum hit points, intelligence is next, strength, and foo as a test to throw things off. So um, include realm server key names all right right institution 
dexterity, hit points, max hit points, intelligence, strength. What can I do here? Something like this? What am I doing? I can do this with multi-cursors. Like that. Okay, and then um, this copied over to the other test. Okay, that one had an armor field in it, so I need to add that. Armor zero. Everything else is the same, right? 16, 22, 34, yeah, okay. And then, um, okay, remove armor, change hit points to 18 out of 24, and then add a foobar. There we go. Okay, and then the same select thing goes down here. Right there. Done. Hey there, super cuber. Double X, Super Cuber Double X. Phil Powers, I forgot to say hi to, apparently. Where was your chat? Oh, we were, we were talking about databases at uh, about five minutes ago. Hi. Okay. Run the character's test again. Still working. All right. I'm doing a little bit of refactoring from the work earlier in the day where... Um, I'm adding um, a bunch of database tables that are going to take over the job of storing um, in the game snapshots the game state. So I have persisted some of the tables but not others and I'm also working on um, having the table schema have full names instead of the abbreviated names. So I'm just going through and refactoring. These are the the original names in the JSON and I'm refactoring them to be uh, more um, to be not not so um, abbreviated so this is command uh, this one was uh, I forget what that was but the key names will list it key golem permission oh we also need to have alias of I forgot that one permission response and we should have alias of add it while we're there right these four there okay and then that means i need to have a table here to translate okay and this was um i forget is this original key a table i can't remember now Get component field name. It was a component type, not a table name. Okay, so it would be GC. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to have these four here. So there, 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 and there. Put a brace. Go over one and hit backspace, backspace enter. And then I'll fix that one up there. And then all these, it's key golem something. Here it's command, permission, response, and alias of. Perfect. So then I need to go to a golem commands. I need to um I need to add an alias of test. Or do I? It doesn't really matter. Okay, here, again, I need to include the key names and use them here. So this should, these should all be uh, replaced. Key golem something. So here it's command. Here it's permission and here it's response. All right. One problem is that um, it doesn't make sense for... Um, something to have a response and an alias of so uh, but you know for the purposes of the database it doesn't really matter we'll just put something in there golem alias of uh what <laughs> okay and then this is um command 
permission response alias of. And then we have to add an extra text here. So this should be what for here for the fourth per fourth column zero based. All right, and then I'm going to copy that down to here and here, and we're changing the text of the response there. And let's say we're removing the alias just to test that too. Okay, and so then the column names go down here. And then the fourth thing was a null thing, so I should expect, uh, I already did this in, a, in, a, in another test, so I, let me find it. Here, I did a null, a null check. Make sure that the fourth column is null. All right. So we will be running this one now, as soon as it links. Oh, I broke it. Uh, did I change up here? I changed it there. Changed that. What did I forget? What about the shape in the in here? Oh, I didn't change it here. Command, permission, response, and then there's alias of. alias of oh and there's no comma there ah f8 instead of f7 and it jumps me straight to where i don't want to be cool all right moving on so i have input and then position right so this was cool down those I can leave. I can leave those. So um, I just need cooldown for input. I'll be explicit in all of them though, because I can. Um, cooldown for key. Uh, it's not item, it's in. Input. Cooldown. Oh, do I not have a key for the move on, move off? Oh, I don't. Does that mean I'm manually doing move on and move off in the code? Ooh, look at that. I am. <laughs> oh, and there's also a move. That's diff. Okay. So I forgot about that one. Interesting. Start move. Wait a minute. So that, does that mean there's there's a move? as a string. Oh, that's somewhere else. We don't care about iron glove. Let's not look at iron glove back end. That's what that was, right? Yeah. Okay, there it's null. Ah. So the move is a valid field. You accidentally swallowed a bunch of Scrabble files. Your next trip to the bathroom could spell. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I like that. All right, nice. Okay. Okay, so then um, I should just be explicit here, shouldn't I? Yeah, because this is a mapping, so th we should just always have a mapping. So move will have a move. And these don't have um, keys. And that uh, it's move on and move off, right? Input. Move off, move on. Sometimes you look up a theme. I see. Sometimes you go through your database. You see, you must be accumulating quite the database. Yeah, you'll never run out of things on the internet, especially cat pictures and jokes, uh, bad, uh, dad jokes. Never run out of them. Database, there you go. Did I miss that? Is that a joke, a, a hidden joke in there? Oh, for dad jokes, your dad a base. Nice one. Jack and Miss figured it out. <laughs> It was an intentional typo. 
Okay, so um, I should at least use that key. Elm server, key names. This is uh, key input cooldown. So yeah, there will be like move. Uh, let's have an empty, let's have a A for left. And then um, there should be cool down, move, move off, move on. Then the move will be um, a text. So that's a string equals the string A for a const care star text. I can hide that. Uh, column numbers should be 0, 1, 2, and 3. All right. Let me... Uh, why doesn't it like this one? Oh, because I misspelled there. There we go. So that should be copied down to here. Where that got moved to a 1, 2, 5.0, and this became a false. And should I make that nulled? Let's do a null. So that select goes there. This key goes in those two places. And copy that one over to there. And then the null check. We'll copy that null check over to here. So fetch column one as a text. Oh, this should have been a text all along, actually. There we go. Fixed it. <laughs> Cops have nothing to go on. There you go. <laughs> One day, Rally Monkey, you'll you'll achieve Mr. Balrog level of joke of dad jokes. Okay, um This is input. Run. I broke it. Probably forgot to change the shape here. Yep. Cool down. Move is the text. There we go. They're searching for the thieves tirelessly. <laughs> oh, interesting. What happened here? It got, uh, it was an empty string, not an A. Oh, uh, is that right? Move? Is it called move? Move, move. Move is A. Fetch column one as a text. Why is it not A? A. Is it in the shape that I did it wrong? Move text. I messed something up here. It's saying it's an empty string and not the le letter A here. What did I do wrong? Move is move. It will, hitting levels of dad jokes that shouldn't be possible. The answer will shock you. <laughs> Man asks the widow at a funeral to say a word. The widow asks him to please do. The man comes up to the microphone, clears his throat, and says, Plethora. The widow replies with tear in her eye, thanks. It means a lot. <laughs> I'll give Super Cuber a point. And that's their first point in the stream, so you get another useless internet point. Why is this empty string, though? Everything else passes. Fetch column one is a text. Interpret as a const care star. It's not, it's not comparing to um, string equal A. Why? That's correct. Oh, hold on, hold on. I think I, I know what I messed up. I didn't list move up here, right? Yep. It's not listed there. It means it is not put into the database. It's fixed. All right, so position is the last one. Maybe after that I'll call it because I'm trying to... Um, trying to get back to four hours of stream because of um, starting to get burned out a little bit. 
so I need to maybe adjust back my hours up slightly, ever so slightly. Okay, let's make this one done and gone like they should be. Done and gone. Another man comes up to the microphone and says, Infinity, the winner replies, thanks. It means more than you could imagine. <laughs> I don't know. I, though, that kind of joke, once you say it, it's kind of hard to make a derivative of it, and it'd still be funny, you know? You know? Do I have a key position X? No, I don't. So, yeah, it's just going to be X is X. I'm listing it for completeness sake. Y, Z, D, and G, and this one, there are keys, right? Key, position, depth. Oh, this, this one actually has a key. It's key, position, zone. There we go. Key, position, gone. So this old zone, previous zone, actually I don't need those anymore. Those should be gone from the code now. I can delete them. Previous zone, I think I stripped that out too. Oh, that's here still? Oh. There's still some migration code in here. Migrate gone flag. We don't need this anymore, do we? Well, at least the other one wasn't used before. So this field shouldn't exist anymore. But I still have the migration code in place. I could probably strip the migration code out at this point now. Can you make a dad joke or a good joke? Chat be like, yes, of course we can. Chat can do anything. I believe in chat. Remember like 15 versions of it? Well, it makes sense. So you can like pick a different one from your arsenal every time, but once you fire the shot, then like, that's it. The other ones have to stay for the next time, I think. You don't always tell dad jokes when you do, he like <laughs> he usually likes them. That's a good one. Good play on the noun ad adjective thing. Back to tests here. Um, these should all pass now, right? All the ones that had to do with the um, database persistence. No, this one I broke. Yeah, because I haven't finished it with that one yet. Uh, position has to say done. No, depth. Did I make it done in one place and by accident, just by not thinking? Yeah, I did. It's depth, not done. And no one caught me on it. <laughs> uh, this should be depth and gone. All right. Yes. So the test needs to be updated, though. Right, and this should use uh, key names. Okay. I'm actually glad I did this refactoring now because I would have perpetuated this problem if I hadn't fixed it right now. Key position um, zone. Key position depth. And key position gone. All right, and then um, this is depth and gone. All right, and I'm going to copy these three down to here. And they didn't ch change there, but here they did, right? The gone changed to true. Like that. Okay, and then this is depth and gone. There we go. Was Shiraka an actual knight at the round table? I See, that's not funny to me because I don't know what Shiraka is. Sorry. Sarcastically laughs? <laughs> Sarcastic laugh. Okay. Yeah, I'm running out of steam anyway. I need, and I'm hungry. Also need to do some stuff for my, um, for Mrs. Raimu. She asked me to do something on the computer, and I said, after the stream, I'll get it done. Although, technically, I said I'd be done in, in that, well, 2 o'clock? Yeah, I can go a little bit more. I can go a little bit more. We'll say I'll finish by 2, my time. 
you missing kids to laugh at most da most dad jokes? Yeah. S Soraka, Sriracha. Okay, I'm just not pronouncing it correctly. Yeah, so that's the kind of joke, Mr. Balrog, that doesn't come across through uh, in text. It has to be spoken. This is a good commit point, I suppose. Okay, update to do. Is its own little thing. Okay, in here, yeah. So this is technically it's refactoring. Allow component field names, component field and column names to differ. Get push that. Okay, I'll do a little bit more work. And then I will call it. It must be most of, yeah, but then you have to transmit them through text because they're punny. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, what would, we, what would we do without you, Mr. Balrog? By the way, if you want to check out Mr. Balrog's stream, you should. Although um, he doesn't, I don't think there's a whole, not a whole lot of jokes in the stream. It's more of playing um, Zeratar's um, Ravenfall game. If you just want to like chill out there and play in a play a stream game i'm pretty sure he's streaming now it's like 24 7 at this point right there's a cards against humanity command in there start of the punic war <laughs> maybe use the international phonetic alphabet 24 7 since february it's quite the thing okay what about quest no, I can't do this one because it's got an embedded object. So skipping quest for now. Script. Script I can do because it's string string. Let's do that one. That's easy. So um, copy caps and call it script. There's going to be a bit of overlap here, isn't there? And I'm I have a tr I have trouble with singular and plural here, don't I? I have um characters, but really um the table name is character. Ah, uh, let's fix it. It's all singular to match the table. Because the table name right now has to match the component type and there's no sing singular plural, plural thing in there so let's just fix it so um um i'm in the completely wrong project here here we go it's character character it's character there we go make sure i don't break anything with that It always makes me ner a little bit nervous when a compile step takes five seconds like that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just because I've never seen that file before. Okay, it didn't break anything. Moving on to... Um, what did I say I was going to do? Script? Yeah, script. Right, script. It has to do with persisting game scripts in an SQL database. There we go. You can make a name about, make a joke about my name. When you ask a cow what his or her favorite grain, rye, moo, rye, moo. <laughs> eh. Eh. No naughty words? What's that? Interesting uh, emote you got there. I'm My brain is slowing down. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When I start to stare at the screen not knowing what I'm doing, that's a sign that I'm getting slower. So it's script name and contents. Yes. Yeah. So name foo contents bar. Let's just keep it simple. Name contents from script. Okay, and then we're going to have it like change or something, right? So um we'll change it to uh spam or something like that so it's a name and contents 
Okay, so then this should be foo string equal const care star and the type is text. Okay, and then we need the second column to be bar. Okay, and then I'm copying these two down to here and making that spam. And I think I'm done. Done with the test. What do you call a poetic cow? Tough to find a joke without unintentionally being insulting. I don't know. What do you call a poetic cow? It went right over my head. You'll keep 3,000 miles away? I see. <laughs> I'll keep 1.5 meters away. Is that six feet? 1.5 meters? Wouldn't it be two meters? No. I don't know my meters to feet very well. Rhyme... Ooh, rhyme moo. Oh, 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 I see. Smack in the box. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it went right over my head. It went right over my horns. Right over my cow horns. Okay, um... This test will fail. Did it not build, though? Oh, I didn't include it in the make file. I'm dumb. I need to include it here in the make file. Script. There we go. Five feet is about one and a half meters. Around where I live, they've been saying six feet. Yeah. Okay, um... Yeah, signs of being disoriented means tired, need break. Chance of making errors and to lose scoring points if he's still here, it goes up. I'm in the wrong place also. I need to go to components here. Right, so then I just need to add the shape here, right? Oh, that's the online converter? Yeah. Thank you, Jacobus. Um, so to lose is still here. Ha ha. Unlurked you at last. Let's see, it says script. Name and contents, right? Now I'm, now I'm actually extra careful. I'm not making a mistake because if I do, that means Toulouse gets another point when he tells me what I did wrong. So I'm trying hard not to make a mistake here. Script. Name should go to keys. Script. Name. And contents should go to keys. Script. Contents. You might see, you might see this as a bit, little bit redundant. It is because I want to have some room between the names I use in uh, the keys in the JSON and the names I use for columns in the database. I want them to potentially be different. Just finish the work you expect to do today, too, so now you just need to be available. Just use quant. What am I going to use for a database? I'm using SQLite, Helma. And hello, by the way. Also, there was another chat that I missed. Someone said hello at 1.13. JXS443, hello. 443, I recognize. That's the port number for SSL or Transport Layer Security. Wouldn't it be easier just... A no I don't know if it would be easier or not. The problem I have right now is that the time it takes to um, load and save the data is enormous and I need to get uh, I need to get that quicker and and I want to I want it to not be tied into any kind of database so I was attracted to SQL simply because there are so many databases out there that pretty much understand SQL um, I have but NoSQL is on the list the 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 answer to any question about uh, wouldn't it be easier or why don't I is mostly th is usually that I can't look at them all at once I can only look at them one at a time and SQLite happens to be the first one to look at and I'm picking it first because it seemed to be a leading candidate so no SQL is on the list I might look at that later and say oh well that makes a, a lot more sense than what I was doing Yeah, the, the reason why um, I'm not picking one of these other databases to start with 
are uh, a lot of these databases can't exist in the same program and I'm trying to um, st at least start with a database engine that I can embed. I also have quite a fast JSON parser SIMD JSON. Gigabytes of JSON per second, really? I find that I'm skeptical, but I'll look into it. Thank you, Chill Mega. Gigabytes per second. What did Twitch do to the link? It it came out it came out fine for me. Oh, for you probably it didn't put it in make it a link for me. It did because I use Yada. The check client, which allows me to see links even if there are parentheses, but for the for those who don't use Yada, I, yeah, I try to put spaces around the parentheses so that it still is a link. Yeah, not for me. For me, it worked just fine. It even did you see the other thing Yada did? It showed a little preview of what it was, so I didn't even have to visit the link to know it was a subject of gigabytes per second. So it made it a link for you too. You might, you might, might be because of BTTV or FFZ plugins. So it works for you guys, but it didn't work for Gelmega probably because of the difference between sender and receiver with Twitch chat, right? Thank you for the follow, by the way. Um, I'm kind of wrapping things up here. I'm going to do this one and then I think I might stop because I am slowing down. I didn't put the shape of this in yet. Use your own chat client. Good for you. I don't have my own chat client, but I do use my own um, chat bot. So I didn't, I wrote my chat bot from scratch. I like writing stuff from scratch. I need to go to where I set up the schema here. And I need to add a table script where its name is a text and so is contents without a comma, contents, there. Yeah, there are some subtle differences in Twitch chat depending on if you're sending or receiving. You know, another thing that uh, discovered is that the modified emotes don't always work for the sender, even in Twitch chat. They definitely don't work in Yada because there is no Twitch API to look up a modified emote reliably. That's what uh, Hideo told me, and he's um, the author of Yada. He knows a lot more about that stuff than I do. Is it when the uh, parentheses is missing? Yeah, I don't know. All right, passing the test. Yeah, that emote IDs are numbers, yeah. And you're supposed to oh, be looking at um, them as um, text replacement, right? Oh, is that how it works? And so that assumption is not valid with modified emotes now? Yeah, 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 exactly. Right, okay. This is why I don't have my own chat client because I don't know that stuff yet. Actually, it'd be the other way around. If I had made my own chat client, I would probably know that. Okay, so I actually kind of want to get through all of the easy tables. So tile is easy. We can do that one. Not tile set because that has an array inside. Not trigger because it has an object inside. Not use... Actually, no, we could do use. It's just a string. Okay, that's easy. And I can't do zone. Okay, so I can do use, and I can do tile, and then I can call it a day. That's what we'll do. That's my stopping point. I'll make the tile table and the use table, and then I'll call it a day. And I'll get back. I need to get back and do these tables that are more complicated. So, for example, the container table is actually two tables because, as you can see here, there is an internal array in the JSON. The way I would probably translate this is the description of the container along with its entity ID go in one table, but then the items array is itself an associative table, a, um, a one-to-many table, where um, we would have as columns the, the container entity the slot index, and then the item entity, 
right? So I this is a more elaborate case where there are two tables, one for the container itself and then another one for the mapping between containers, item slots, and item item entities. Your chat client is in Golang? Oh, that's nice. I used to use Chatty, but then I moved to Yada. The main reason why I don't use the built-in Twitch chat is because I um, don't always see a lot of chat, especially when people tag me. So I've always wanted to use chat clients that actually make a sound or a noise when I get tagged in chat, and both Chatty and Yada do that. That's a lot of nulls, yeah. The container's empty in this case. If I, um, that's why I showed this one. This stash here has actually two items in it. These are, these are just empty. Empty containers. Where's a more interesting one? GM Global Cache is not interesting. How about this one? Outside, there's, there's a box with four items in it, right? So this should be five rows in the database, one in the co container table, and then four rows in the container item uh, mapping table. Heading out. Oh, that's, that's fine, Goddamn. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the gifted subs. I'm, I'm going to be wrapping this up soon anyway, so you're not going to miss anything. I'm just adding those... Um, I am just adding tile and use tables, and then I'll, then I'll be finishing up the stream, so you're not going to miss anything important. All right, so... Tile. Let's actually let's do them both at the same time here. I'm going to want tile CPP, and I'm going to want use.cpp. All right, and then um, let's go back to our good old, our old good friend Caps and copy and paste him to tile and use. All right, and so um, thank you for that follow. I do appreciate it very much, actually. This table has to do with persisting Entity use, um, they are, uh, use script references. Entity, how to do with persisting which entities in the game have game scripts associated with players using those entities. We'll rearrange it like that so it's a little bit easier to read. This module contains the unit tests for the components class that... Oh, the unit tests of the components class that have to do with persisting in an SQL database. Which entities in the game have game scripts... Let's just say the entities in the game which have game scripts associated with players using those entities. Okay. That's actually, this is sort of confusing to say players. The entities in the game which have game scripts associated with their use. Okay, so then... Um, what keys do we have for use? Actually, there are no keys. The um, components are strings. Oh, this is going to be a special case then, isn't it? Oh. I can't use my helper functions for this. Okay, so... I think I'm going to punt on this one, actually. Let's... You know what I'll do? I'll just leave it empty. I will leave these all to do. Assert true is false. Actually, wait a minute. Um... You know, I can leave the tests in place and just, they can just fail. I'll just won't implement it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I'll put something realistic in here, like... Um, I was just going to type a naughty word in here, but instead I'm going to say um, explode. <laughs> and... Um, so there will be a table, but there's only going to be one column. And let's make the column the same as the name of the table. Yeah, why not? Because I can, right? So string equal to explode. If we interpret const care star the first column as a text. Okay, the I can't get this to pass with the code I wrote though, so that's fine. I'll just do it some I'll just do it later. 
So then if it's like explode and we change it to um, open or something, then when we select use again, it should just change the column to use or to open. Right. So I'm, I'm going to make sure this builds, but I'm not going to uh, worry about... Um, I'm not gonna have a yeah. I'm gonna have a linker error because of the other test framework, test fixture that I made. So let me um. I'll get back to use. I need to go into tile though. Tile. Tile. Shorten that. Close that. That have to do with persisting the uh, vis the visible. attributes well persisting how entities are drawn are shown are are drawn graphically de depicted graphically in the game okay this module contains unit tests of the components class that have to do with persisting in an SQL database how entities are depicted graphically in the game. That's precisely correct. Okay, so then, um, yes, tile has what in it? It has access, which is an integer. What else does it have changed? I think that's obsolete. Direction, we do have that one. So um, I think the d default is 15 if it's not present. And uh, right, health bar level, health bar, as if something has a health bar. So let's say it's like 8 out of 10 or something. Just have an example with all of the keys present. ID and set. So ID... 2 in set 42. Rendered is the word you're looking for. Do you have any suggestions for a note taping note taking app for coding? Um, I like to use OneNote, but not everybody likes OneNote. Evernote is another note taking app that I've heard good things about. The other thing you can do that I've started to do for to do items is um, y you can use VS Code because you're coding in that already, maybe. If you're using VS Code, there's a plugin called To Do Plus that um, it looks like this. And um, it uh, has some features that make it easy to, to manage to do lists. So, like, you can mark something done and it automatically adds a timestamp, maybe. Or you can say, um, I'm not going to do that anymore, so cancel it. Right? And. Um, so I would suggest one of those, either OneNote, Evernote, I think it's called, or maybe To Do Plus with um, just a To Do file, if if that's your thing. Thank you for the follow, by the way. All right, um, yeah, my brain is slowing down big time. I don't think that this changed field is ever used anymore. Yeah, migrate old tile. So it's part of the old migration stuff. Yeah, we don't. I'm. I'll. I'll I'm just going to drop it. It's not going to be in the database. Okay. So then the fields that we have are access, direction, health, bar level, health, bar max, ID, and set, or tile set. Let's make that tile ID and tile set ID. And then because the name is long, I am going to um, put each of these on its own row with multi-cursor like that. Isn't that cool how we can do that? Thank you for that follow, by the way. All right, and now what do we expect here? Right, um, they're all integers, right? One, two, three, four, five more of them. So we had um, 
15, and we have 8, and we have 10, and we have 2, and we have 42. Okay, so then um, the columns are also used here. So paste that there. And then the setup, let's have it set up the same way in this other test. And now here, to test a change, let's drop the health bar and the direction, and then change the access. Okay, and so then um, we'll copy all of the expectations over. And then I'm going to steal from um, one of these other tests where we have a null check. I don't know where I did one of these. Oh, there, there is one. There. Okay, so then uh, we got rid of the health bar, so that's and the direction. So that's these three. So columns one, two, and three are all null. And the axis changed to one. Tau set ID and tau set didn't change. Okay, I think that's good. Build that. Make sure it runs. And it missed low, it it forgot where my tests were. So we're gonna have to say show where that is. Okay, here they are. It's gonna all fail. And then the other one I put in there that I'm not gonna fix right now or use. Okay, they don't they shouldn't crash though. They'll crash because probably because I don't have the shape added here. So let's add the shape. Um tile. It was Access, right? Access direction. These are all integers, by the way. Integer. Three more, right? Or is it four more? Four more. Health bar level. Health bar max. Tile ID and tile set ID with no comma there. Okay, and then the use was just going to have a use as a text, and that's it. All right. So then, right. So they do not crash, but they just don't they don't pass the tests, and that's fine. We'll work on use later. I just want to have a placeholder for it. Okay, so this doesn't work yet because we haven't written the code. Back to components we go. All right, so I need to add an entry for the names. So tile, access. I'm just gonna cheat and take that and paste it there and then use multi cursors here to just add them all. Comma, key, tile something. Oops. Messed up. Go over there. Fixed it. Okay, so this one tile will be direction, right? This should be tile access. Tile health bar level. Tile health bar max. Tile ID and tile set. All right. And then um, that's the column names. And then the um, column this column uh, specification is tile and just that name of um, string so without the entity number so I'm gonna paste that there again I'm gonna use multi cursor here just go one word over and do that and then delete oops there actually I guess we can put them on different lines there we go Perfect. And that's it, I think. Link. Run. Pass. Yes. Okay, y'all do use some other day. <laughs> It'll probably be tomorrow. Um, should I just run everything? Let's run all the tests. You can't use trailing commas in SQL, right? 
And we can see that in the schema description here. If we go to, yeah, I guess that works. Yeah, the the way they put the way they put the um, comma in there. If you have a comma, you have to have another column name or list. If they wanted to support trailing commas, they would have just comma be an optional thing you can run through, and then you could either go to where or out or back to a column name list. In some places in the C++ code too. Uh, oh yeah, like in um, argument lists. Like right here. Yeah, I can't put a comma there. You would think that, that it should be fle flexible enough to let me put a comma there, but yeah. yeah. I think that has to do with the original syntax of C couldn't be extended, but when we're talking about um, arrays, you always could have a comma at the end. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of sort of weird when you think about it. Because that was... Um, back from old C syntax as well. If you could have a comma there, why couldn't you have one in the argument list? I don't know. Who knows? Ooh, we're breaking, we're failing some tests here. Why are these tests failing? Oh, yeah, okay. The, um, looks like the, um, some of the tests are too sensitive about wh where the OAuth token is kept. I moved the OAuth token in the game. I never updated these tests. Yeah, see, it expects it to be um, the credential to be set up. I guess we never set the credential, so that's why it failed. Huh. Interesting. Oh, I changed it from OAuth to something else. You guys can't even see that. There, now you can see it. I changed it from OAuth to something else. What did I change it to? I think I changed it to bot OAuth. Yeah. Okay, so I, th these are not broken today. These were broken uh, sometime last week, and I never bothered to update the test. Pub subs broken too? Oh yeah, the auth token. Yeah, I moved where the OAuth token was and I broke broke a bunch of those tests. Makes sense. What about this one? Yeah, again, it's the OAuth. Everything that depends on the OAuth token broke because I changed the name of it. Okay, I'll fix that later. Should I make a, a to-do for myself for that? To-do. Uh, right down here, above that line, uh, fixed tests broken when OAuth token key, credentials key, was changed. There, I have a note to myself to fix it. Does it show that it's skipped? I don't remember. Um... I don't know actually know how to skip tests with this thing. You can either run or debug them all or run and debug them separately. I think if you haven't run it yet, it shows in this gray with a black square in it. Maybe that's what you would see for a skipped test. I don't know. It's showing them that for all the ones I haven't run yet. Um, but it eventually it will all go either green or red because it's going to run them all. Yeah, so I broke OAuth tests. I'll fix that later. This one I know is broken because I haven't implemented the code yet, and I'm not going to do that this stream, and everything else is passed. So I think we're good to check it in as long as I know that there's... Ah, uh, where did it go? Th uh, this is broken. Oh, and I haven't done that. I need to do that too. The The initial database migration isn't done yet, and it should be. Right. Yeah, it would be nice to skip them. Yeah, it would be. Maybe there's a way. I just don't know how to do it. That's usually the answer. Yeah, there you go. I, I don't mind. Um, keeping it as a fail sort of sort of pressures me to get it um, done. 
See you, Chalmega. I'm wrapping up the stream anyway, so you're not going to be missing anything. Uh, I did two things here. I renamed characters to character, and then I added script, tile, and use, right? Okay. So work in progress migrating game or ECS data to database. Uh, rename character. CPT to character. There should be an S in there. And this is ECS tests. Okay, and then um, add script, tile, and use tables. And that's basically it, right? Well, up, update to do. Let's go with that. Do I know Alt V? It's a development for, platform for GTA 5, but it's developed on JS. You so said we could add a script to it so that Alt V can read the scripts in Lua. Can you help you? Um, I don't know Alt V. GT, the only thing I know about GTA 5 is it's free right now for the next three days through the Epic Store. And that my son has been playing it, and it looks pretty fun, and he has a lot, he has a fun time. But I don't know a, a, about any of the development in it. I know Lua and how to embed Lua in C++, but I don't know exactly what help you need. So, uh, what was it? Is it a Lua command? Yeah, I have a tutorial on how to embed Lua in C++. But I don't know what kind of help you need. If there's something specific I can answer, then let me know. It's enticing you to actually get an Epic Games. I know, it's sort of tempting, isn't it? And that's what I've... I, have not, I haven't bought a single game on Epic. I've on, I only get the free games. You get like a free game every week. Lewis language of development's very bad. Well, that's, um, that's maybe your opinion. I kind of like it. I view it as a total scripting language, though. I have a few friends from my last job who um, believe in using Lua for entire programs. I, I think it's great for scripting, as in an embedded language, a language embedded into a larger system that is, it's not written in. So, for example, my game system right here is all written in um, the front end is JavaScript, the back end is C++, and I use Lua, but Lua is embedded in the back end system as scripts. So for example, where are my scripts? The, um, when you give a sword to a player, this is the Lua script, and it really was just a, a test placeholder to start an item transaction with this kind of item template. Um, but yeah, it's super convenient because I can just tweak these numbers. I can set that to a three, hit submit, and I'm now I'm done. Or if I change my mind and make it back to a two, done. I don't have to recompile my game. So I like it for some of the pros, like the ability to change the code on the fly without having to recompile. And I'm probably speaking too quickly because I have that tendency to speak quickly. It's nice for interpreted languages. Yes, that's one pro for an interpreted language. Also, the fact that I can, um, because it's hosted in an embedded environment, um, I can have it just completely drop its state and then generate a new state, read in whole new scripts, and it's very fast and easy, and I don't need to unlink and relink and all that stuff. So, a lot of convenient things around it. But yeah, I don't know if I can help you exactly. But if... If there is something I can help you out with, you're, or the community, you're welcome to um, post it in my Discord. You speak English, you just don't understand it very well. I, s I can understand and speak a little bit of French, but it's been many years since I've had to, so I'm not very good at it. So you are welcome to join the Discord channel or s server and ask your question there, and either I or someone in my community might be able to help you. If you maybe can be a little bit specific about what your problem is. So, if it's in general, can I help with a project? No, because I'm right now focused on my own project. But if there's something you're stuck on and or you need some advice about something specific, you describe your situation, show a little bit of your code, then either I or someone in the community might say, okay, I have an idea what you could look at or what you could try or maybe we spot something wrong in the code, that kind of thing. That That's how maybe we could help. But we need uh, a little bit more detail. 
I speak a tiny bit of French. Un peu. Je parle, je, je parle français un peu. <laughs> but uh, not very well. Just follow all those questions pattern. Yes. Okay, I need to wrap things up right now because I am getting tired and hungry. But yeah, please join the Discord stream, the channel, if you um, want to participate outside the stream. And I will be back tomorrow. My schedule is 9.15 a.m. my time, which is 16.15 UTC. And I'm going to go stretch while I get something to eat, Nui. Let me leave the schedule there and uh, show the game while I pick someone to raid. So I'm going to go to twitch.tv, my name following, to see who is streaming right now. You too, Toulouse. Thank you for being here. I'm just uh, browsing through my list to s see who we can stream now, or who we can raid now. See, I, when I get tired, I start to say the wrong words. It's really annoying to me to say the wrong words. See ya, Jackamus. So I would like to introduce you guys to a streamer who doesn't have as many followers, but is also working very hard on their own game. And um, the stream format is a little bit different, and I'm waiting for an ad right now. So every, every stream is a little bit different. So if you like my stream, you might not necessarily like the people I raid, but that's fine. You might not have seen these people before. So this one is Makings of a Hero. And she is working on a game in Unity. She's also using Blender, C Sharp, and all that stuff. And um, I hope you enjoy her stream. And hopefully she'll introduce her game. It's some, sometimes people will focus on their work and not take opportunity to explain the game. But I always like it when they do. So, um, But it's up to the streamer, right? So hopefully we can um, at least say hi and check out her game and see how things are going. I'm going to start the raid button. <laughs> and how come it's not showing... Oh, because I'm uh, m not spelling it right? There it is. Okay, I hit the button. So yeah, see ya, Anakin Luke and Nui and Jackamus and Romania Hate and Toulouse. And thank you, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate your um, being in the community and giving suggestions and feedback and comments and just chatting and hanging out here. I'll be back tomorrow. Enjoy Failings of a Hero. And I'll see you next time, as long as I can find the button here to do it. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.